Welcome to the Atlaran Adventuring Company. This is the world of Atlaran. Beyond the Forgotten Realms, and perhaps not far from Exandria, Atlaran and her two moon sky have seen leviathans, dissolutions, divine gates, and calamities. And that's only the last 5,000 years. Perhaps most distinct for her scars, Atlaran is host to a number of sacred or cursed sites, depending on whether you ask Bahamut or Asmodeus. Or, perhaps you'll ask the old Balin gods, whom the world herself and her moons and star are named after. These places, like Mount Gear, the Monomarig Meteor, Drosdana, the Dawn Deep Trench, the Shattered Continent, the Greenhall Sea, the entirety of Garrett Eldathos, they all play parts in the world's fate. But it's the people that truly shape it. And every so often, little windows of time, short glimpses into exceptional people's lives, are plucked from the midst of the chaotic centuries and we call them stories. They're not always epics of heroism and bravery. Quite the contrary. Every hero was once a bumbling fool, or a selfish mercenary looking to make a platinum. Or, in most cases, both. And that brings us to our particular window in time. Following in the footsteps of a scorned bard and her unlikely lone wolf companion. Or, perhaps Lone Coyote is more apt. Marin Veneer, a half-elven fighter with a love of freedom and gunpowder and a former bard relearning her musical skills. Marin was the daughter to a frail sun-elf laundress who passed away when she was still young. Left to care for her half-sister Sylphie alone, Marin grew up far too fast. In her desperation to keep her sister from starving, Marin accepted help from the Alteras and was lured into their poisonous web of abuse, theft, and murder. Forced to kill and torture, often those unsuspecting and even undeserving, eventually Marin dared to question her adoptive father Alistair and was slaughtered on the spot by her brothers just before she was 18. Sylphie was left to flee alone, but ten years later Marin awoke, revived by the Heidling cult. Sickly but determined, she recovered thanks to powerful magics and the apparent interest of Cynthia Moore, mother of the new king of the Arbiters, Silas Moore III. And, by Cynthia's order, Marin was given as a gift to Silas in the hopes that she would become his subservient partner, a suitable wife that would not question the Moore family thanks to her debt to them. Marin, however, had the spark of rebellion in her soul by then and wasn't about to be controlled again. When Silas proved he supported her in the freedom of those crushed by the Arbiters, Marin reluctantly fell in love. Now with her fiancé at her back and the work to be done, Marin is ready for the long road ahead. She'll make sure no one suffers under the boot of the Arbiters or the Heidelin cult ever again. Kit. Just Kit. A shifter, or Eleusir, of the Coyote Totem and mildly devout cleric of Savros, the Balin god of mischief and wanderers. Originally hailing from Amnoblin as part of a group of natives called the Manamar and Dalmaric, Kit's people have always been harassed by the Skull, or outsiders, who seek to take their ancestral lands and waters. Kit's particular tribe was attacked when he was young, rendering himself and his brother Ren orphans, and forcing their tribe to flee their home continent altogether. They found refuge in Irakel, but struggled to adjust to the change from sub-Arctic to equatorial desert. Trusting in the sacred Mount Gear, heart of the world, to watch over them, Kit's people settled in the northern savannas. But Kit never settled. Aimlessly causing trouble to Skull and taking mercenary contracts to send money home since he was 15, Kit has become a person of interest to the Guild of Wardens, enforcers who help keep the common laws. Thanks to Dana Fioris, a former troublemaking comrade who eventually went straight and became a warden herself, Kit has quite the dossier with the wardens and rarely struggles to find work at their guild. And now, alongside Sylphie, Kit has his own scores to settle with the Arbiters, though breaking apart an organization of kidnappers and slavers would be reason enough to destroy them. Oh, hey, everybody. Hello. 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 Hi, y'all. Oh. 
Sorry, up, I'm cat? still kind of sleepy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome to the Alarn Adventuring Company. My name is Taylor Wallace. I'll be your dungeon master today. Um, I don't know why I went for uh, 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 Texan. Southern. Yeah. Um, joining me, I have Astrid Knight. What up? And Blake Wolf. Woo! Awesome. Oh. Uh, I'm enthusiastic. I'm, yeah. I'm thoroughly unprepared for this week because I fell asleep and forgot to review last week, but that's okay. Nothing really. Well, I mean, things happened last week, but nothing like. I guess. Earth shattering. Super, yeah. super crazy. Yeah. Um, you guys spent the whole thing being bums at a bathhouse. Yep. Among other things. But, uh, yeah, so we don't really have a recap this time, so let's just fucking get into it. What are you guys doing? Oh. Uh, oh, so no. I remember we were at the beach. We went to the beach, we and then we to went the to the bathhouse. Bath house. And then Marin and Silas broke off to go bang in the woods. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's where we left off. Oh, yeah, so that's where we left off. We were gonna, like, fade into the next day. Sure. Okay, well, I wasn't sure because I had asked uh, Bull's mom about regenerating, so I wasn't sure mm-hmm. if she was going to tell me yet or wait a day or what. You don't hear anything from her yet. Okay. Oh, you also burned a hole through the town. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I Well, you know. You know. You know. As you do. Of course. Shit happens. <laughs> Totes. It yeah. does. So yeah, I guess we can yeah. go. Yeah, let's fade to next day. Sure. Already. Oh my what? God, I feel so awake and refreshed. Oh, mm. wow. hey, oh. Ben, what can trips do you currently have? I have. Well, uh, I have poison spray, frostbite, primal savagery, thorn whip, and guidance. And you gave me shape water for Nyx, and then uh, I also have Make It Pink. Great. I have a lot of cantrips. Sorry, I'm just working on Nyx's thing. No, that's um, why did I add? Because I know Flameheart got a new thing last time, too. I think I added that. Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, still what? what am I doing? What am I doing? Uh... Yeah, what are you guys doing? So uh, we're having breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the the next morning after everybody regathers at uh, Bull's mom's house, Irina Calendar, um, you guys sit down for breakfast as prepared by your dog friend. Big, oh yeah, fluffy dog friend. Um. And uh, that morning, as you guys all gather up, you notice Irina is not there. Uh, Bull very quickly informs you she gets up super early. That's gross. To go over to the guild. Ugh. Um, well, when you're kick ass, you can get up in the. Yeah, you can get up whenever the fuck the you want. I guess. Uh, yeah. So you all gather around uh, a local feast. So instead of the like, sort of, well, how would you describe it? Instead of the Northern European fare that you would get in Amnoblin or Harris, uh, this is like Mediterranean stuff and Hawaiian stuff. So there's like, there's poi, there's pork, there's pineapple, there's, other stuff that I don't know well enough about Hawaii to know what they eat. <laughs> Coconuts. Yeah. yeah. I don't know the names of dishes in Hawaii, just poi. <laughs> um, I would say we eat a well-balanced meal. Sure. There we go. <laughs> a little bit of protein, a little bit of vegetable, yep. a little bit of fruit. A little bit of starch. Yep. Sugar sparingly. Yes. Because we want to stay fit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And dragons ain't going to kill themselves. Well, they might, but we don't know that mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, where's Ted? Is Ted still hanging around? You don't know. 
<laughs> the goose so. goes where he wants. Yeah, I know he was hanging out with us on the beach, so. Um. Yeah, Ted took off the previous day, and you have not seen him since. Um, oh, but, uh, yeah, you guys are gathered around the, um, uh, the table when uh, you hear a little bit of a commotion not too far away. And it sounds like a might be violent. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'll uh, go look. Yeah, I will too. Yeah. Just okay. Stick my head out. The guys aren't doing anything, so I got to do a thing. <laughs> um. I don't know what so, to do. We're just like relaxing. Yeah, that's why I said if you guys wanted to just skip stuff, we would. But um, as you go up to the door and stick your head outside. Uh, you see a little bit of a kerfuffle happening <gasps> in the middle of the square. A kerfuffle? A kerfuffle. Oh um, my god. Where a bunch of dudes... In my in suburban neighborhood? A I bunch of dudes... And I just realized it's going to sound like the Bloods and the Crips, but a um, bunch of dudes <sighs> in red and a bunch of dudes with the blue armbands are like yeah. standing in oh. two separate groups. It's Team watching. Aqua versus Team Magma. No, it's definitely Bloods and Crips. Um, Are they doing ballet? What? Are they doing ballet? It's the sharks and the jets. Yeah. No. Oh. No, they're punching the shit out of each other. It's just two guys. uh, Two ripped dudes who are just beating the shit out of each other and being, like, egged on by both sides. Oh. Uh, Can I walk over there very nonchalantly? (laughs) <laughs> and like sidle up to one of the guys who's not fighting and be like, "Hey, so is this like um, organized s- fighting or?" You do see a lot of townsfolk are just walking by, like they don't care it's happening, or some of them are even joining in. Um, as you sort of sidle up to one guy who's uh, this big, like buff tabaxi, um, mm-hmm. he glances down at you and says, "What? What did you ask?" I said, uh, "Is this? Is this?" planned fighting or is this do you guys need help what's going on it's happening in the middle of the street obviously it's not planned oh should we be concerned nah okay good to know crunch carry on gentlemen yeah um but within within the group you can see that uh sort of at where the two groups meet and create this ring around these two guys there are several from either side the urikala and the tala um just like they're doing that thing that guys do when they're trying to intimidate each other but they don't actually want to punch each other where no, they're just God. like puffing their chest and be like what do um, you do and you actually see between the two sides a haka breaks out where they just oh. start like screaming and doing the the chants and dancing at each other and it's like scary and intense but at the same time also kind of cool to watch yeah um and it seems like the orcs especially are leading uh, and they just like stamp their feet toward each other and like one side will watch the other side weirdly respectfully and then come back with their own um finally somewhere in the in the in the duel of fisticuffs um the uh in blue the uricalo uh fighter this huge hobgoblin just lands uh a punch right on the guy's chin and just takes him off his feet and he hits the ground and doesn't get back up the uricalo side in blue just goes absolutely nuts while the other side kind of like square their shoulders and straighten up and they don't get violent they just get kind of quiet oh and the guy is dragged back as he's like starting to wake up and like no i can i can still go (laughs) and and they just pull him away and the tala fighters leave the square while the urikala fighters just basically take a victory lap huh huh i'm gonna watch it Oh, oh, sorry. I was saying I was going to walk back to the house. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, I kind of halfway started, like, going down the street, but I'm like, oh, this kind of looks like they have it covered, so. Yeah. Um, Bull steps out sort of with with Marin and was watching, and you see he watches with this big smile on, big toothy grin on his face the whole time. Does this happen often? Oh, yeah. Yeah, all uh, the time. 
I walk up to Marin and I'm like, it was not a big deal. It's just a, it's just a man tantrum. They're fine. God. Well, I mean, it's it, it is kind of always the men, but mm. it's just what we do. We have a difference. We settle it, and it's over. Do you do that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I can't see you just doing that randomly. Well, I mean, I'm not going to walk up to somebody and be like, fight me. But if I have a problem with the Tala fighter and we can't figure it out verbally, then yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. It's, I mean, we're not enemies. Hmm. We're not, like, street gangs. Are you just, like... What's the difference? Just rivals. Yeah, is it just like... I don't know. Uh, I think the big difference was we kind of started out the same and then divided over some disagreements and how we wanted to run the guilds. This was way before my time, but uh, the Tala fighters have a different fighting style too. Oh my uh, god, we're in the Karate Kid. <laughs> the the Urukalo is weird, more... We're a lot more, like, I guess, reckless in a lot of ways. Where there is formal training and all that, but you just sort of do what feels right. And you get it kind of narrowed through training with mentors like my mum. Whereas the Tala are really, really strict. They, they're like... It's almost like uh, the difference between, like, I don't know, uh, what, like, fighting monks do and what, you know, just fist fighters do. Hmm. That's interesting. Cool. Yeah. Basically, the difference mechanically is barbarians versus monks. Right. Mm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, and he shows you um, his guild ring that you guys know, uh, had learned was enchanted. Um, he says, and we all have one of these. Hmm. What does it do? Uh, it makes you better at fist fighting. Oh. Because, like, the telefighters are technically better at it, but we go longer. Hmm. Mm. That's an important skill to have, mm -hmm. I've heard. Yes. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Wait, is that a sex joke? Sure. I don't uh, feel right about it. Never mind. Yeah, um, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Wow, you two. All right. So, Man. well, it's a new day. Uh, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. It's a new, new life. life. It's a new life. Um, Feeling peachy. Yeah. Um, is Sylvie out here? Or did she stay inside? Um. Yeah, she was, she was rubbernecking, just like you guys. Okay. Uh, so... What are we thinking about today? Just do we want to have more structured fun, or are we it's like not structured? I'm just trying mm. to have. We should go out into the woods and find something to murder. Is that okay? Um, Sylvie can't really do that. Oh, who the fuck says? No. She's um, looking better to he me. Said. I mean, she's looking better, but it's... Thanks. She still what? doesn't look great. No offense, Sylvie. Oh, uh, but, I mean... That doesn't hurt better. my feelings at all, all right? Oh. Well, it's not anything personal. It's just you just got uh -huh. resurrected two days ago. You was dead. Yeah. Okay. We're fixing it. To... What? Let... Why are we so worried about... What? The truth. <laughs> We're just trying, we're not, we're taking three days to not think about all the terrible shit that's happened to us. And we're failing oh, miserably at I feel it. like we're doing great, actually. Okay, well. I, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of want to go watch more of those, uh, those fights. Okay. I want to watch Irina kick ass. That would be fun. I mean, we can go look at them. Sure. You guys can do whatever you want. I don't care. The, the, let's go. Let's go watch her kick ass. You yeah. think she'll let us kick ass with her? Possibly. 
I I don't really kick ass. I'm I more shoot ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not much of an ass kicker either, but one not right can dream. Now. Not right now. Um but uh Justine comes out as well and is like I uh, do know if she's married to English. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I want to kick ass with her. Okay. I mean, I might be open to it. Yeah, and um, Bo's like, I'm pretty okay, cool. let's go kick ass with my mom. Okay. What about you, Silas? Are you coming with? Because <laughs> he hasn't popped up. He's just kind of going along with everything. He says... Yeah. Uh, I suppose. Great. Enthusiastic. Yes. I like it. Um, I'm along for the ride. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to the pen. I know why Justine keeps getting an American voice, because all the English voices are smoother. (laughs) (sighs) Okay. Um... Then I'll send you Nix's first thing. Oh, okay. Yay! Yay. Is that on Messenger? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. (gasps) Yay! I'm so excited! I'm glad you like that. I'm gonna fix things! No, you just wait. Okay. I'm gonna fix everything. Oh god. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, but, yeah. but you guys head across Urkala sweet. Square. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um tight. Tight, 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 tight. Across <laughs> Urkala Square to uh to the uh training ground of the guild. And you see once again there's a big crowd gathered around the uh pit. And um they're they're not like cheering on or anything they're just sort of watching and a bunch of them aren't even paying attention they're just sort of sitting and like having a snack with each other or stretching or doing their own training it seems like this general area is sort of their like outdoor gym um and you see down in the pit there's like a line not too many but a line of uh, younger uh men and women who are all uh, facing Irina, and there's a bunch of uh, like target dummies set up, and uh, she's just sort of walking up and down the line, explaining things to them, and she gets them spaced apart, and it almost turns into like like a kid's like martial arts class where she has them all like practicing their punches and kicks, um, and you can tell these people they are younger, they're like in their uh mid to late teens um and she's running them through and like correcting them and uh as you guys approach the guild members all look at you guys and recognizing you from the day before they just sort of wave and they're like hi hi how you doing um um yeah and uh, as Bull comes up to the edge of the uh, the the ring, um, Irina looks up and says, "Bull, come come down here. Bring um bring some friends." And uh, he nods and like looks at you guys. Yes, me. Wh- okay. Uh, Who wants to go in? Uh oh, I'm not very good at hand to hand. Uh. Yeah, you might want to sit this one out then. Okay. Um, oh, and Justine. Just hang back. Well, yeah, Justine. Yeah, obviously. Oh, okay. Any you other weak motherfuckers want to come? Let's go. Uh, and Silas is just like, uh, no. no okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. I will make my way down into the the fighting pit um yeah bull takes you guys down there and opens up the the gate and you see all these young people looking at you guys like not sure what to think of you especially kit because he's a little twinky guy damn right um (laughs) and uh irena sets you guys up across from them and says 
why don't you all show us uh, just so, show us something to practice? And uh, Justine like jumps in for her. She's like, I've been waiting for this. And she just like hauls off and just full body weight into one of these uh, dummies with a, oh. with a, with a punch. <laughs> she just straight up punches one of the students. Yeah. <laughs> Knocked out um, cold. Yeah. Just dead. Um. <laughs> Where's my DJs? DJ. Actually, where are my DJs? Oh my god, you don't have any dice? Oh my god. Where my bo- oh, there it is. <sighs> so scary. I wasn't scared. I knew they couldn't go far. <laughs> Um, but she just hauls off full force punches this dummy with it with just like a Rah! the whole way, and some of the students are like Jesus, and she just knocks its block clean off, and just snaps the wooden post inside, and some of the students are like, Oh God, <laughs> and she just like standing there, just like hopping around like in a boxer stance, and Irina just laughs. She's like, Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Calm the fuck down, crazy face. <laughs> and uh, she looks at uh, Bull and says, Bull, as uh, one of the more traditionally trained ones, do you want to give him a try, honey? And uh, Bull's like, okay. And he sort of like rolls his shoulders and like gets the rage going. And he just slams into one of these in a full like shoulder blow. And he... Uh, he doesn't break it, but he knocks it completely like up and off of its like stand, and he just full on just pile drives it over. Um, and uh, Irina smiles and then looks to Kit. My turn. I'll I'll go up to one of the one of the little dummies and one of the little dummies, and I will um. I will do a hand motion in front of my face mm-hmm. and cast Primal Savagery, and I'll just take my claws back that, like, extend longer, and I'll just slash it in front of them. <laughs> and it takes uh, 12 points of acid damage. Okay. So you slash across the front of it, just tearing four big holes across the front, and uh, they sizzle. A little as they open up and Irina is like okay not bad um a little beyond what we're teaching here but that that's a good trick so sharp uh, <laughs> and I uh, should have shifted into a werewolf and just been like everyone just shits their pants immediately <laughs> And Irene is like, that's right, we got werewolves, bitch. <laughs> um, that would look cool. But yeah, um, after after these, like, Irene is like, oh, my God, you guys are terrible teachers. <laughs> um, and, and Bull's just like, sorry, mom. And she's like, it's fine. And she motions to all three of you and is like, this is what you'll be able to do eventually. Some of it. <laughs> I don't know what uh, the I don't know what Twink Boy has got going for him, but uh, you'll be able to do something similar. You say you don't know who has what going for them? He says, I don't know what Twink Boy has going for him, oh. but I'm committing to the fact that Irina is Tara. Um, uh, I I want to look back at my dummy again, mm-hmm. and I'm going to I'm gonna think about Nyx in the back of my head, or I'm going to snap him forward and just turn him into like i uh, I'll turn him into an earring. If he lets okay. me. And I'm going to look at the dummy slurs. and I'm going to be like, hang on, I got a better one. And I'm going to cast Ray of Frost on it. Okay. And yeah, it does. Uh, uh, wait. 12, does 12 points of ice damage. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to pull my hand back. I'm going to punch it and hopefully it'll shatter. Uh, I'll punch it really hard. Roll, roll. Uh, well, I don't think you roll. Just uh, it'll be one plus your strength. Two. 
Two. All right. <laughs> you punch it. A tiny like chunk comes off of it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> From the stands, Marin goes, "Good job, Kit." <laughs> like the that worst that person that ever. That enthusiastically. Oh my god! Good and job. Just, Justine comes over and just like big hand just claps you on the shoulder, like the kind of like clap you on the shoulder. We're like, <laughs> oh, um, and she's like, "Good job." Thanks. Oh my god, I'm so cool, you guys. <laughs> Uh, and Irina's like, all right, get out of my arena. You're are not... you sure? I've got something cooler. Do you want me to do more? And Bull's like, yeah. I turn into a werewolf. <laughs> Everybody gets very quiet and stares. Make an intimidation check. Like, Haka. Habagawa. Habagawa. <laughs> oh my god. Ba. Ba. Intimidation? Mm -hmm. 20. Ah! And like most of the clash just flees. The rest of them oh. are just frozen in fear. And all of the other fighters like come and like grab the edges of the ring, like looking in, like being like, what the fuck just happened? And Bull is just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and Irina is just like, Hagawa? Habagadawa? <laughs> and Bull just looks at his mom and is like, it's okay. He's like, he's a, he's, he's a good dog. How about? <laughs> all of the class is just gone. They've fled out of the <laughs> arena and all the fighters are looking in like, should we be concerned? I'm going to like, I'm going to like lean one hand on the ground and like stretch a back leg out like animals do when they're like stretching mm -hmm. and just be all silly and like jump around. Take yeah, a couple really. slashes at the dummy. Irina's <laughs> just watching this, just like, what? Bull. <laughs> what? And he's like, I don't know, it's cute. I'm so cute. Haba, haba kawaba. Deep yeah, he, deep he walks gaba over da. and it's weird because it's a dog pattern. I'm a blue, dog, daba dee, daba die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haba ga, haba wa, haba ga, ba, ba, wa. Yeah. Um, and then after I get done fucking around for 10 minutes, like I will <laughs> drop it. And Irina just nods and is like, okay then. Yeah. Do you want to teach that here? No. Okay. No. Get out you, of my arena. You oh. could turn them all into werewolves. Then they could dance. I, <laughs> just make them so, line up and be like, hi, neck. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I'll take, I'll d bite the little, the little teeny tiny piece of skin in the inside of their elbow. Yeah. Just to be a real dick because it hurts so bad. <laughs> um, yeah. It's awful. I know. I do it to people randomly. <laughs> um, okay. That true life story. I've actually done that to people. Uh, all right. I will leave the arena. Bye. Irina's arena. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. But as, uh -huh. as you as you get out, um, Bull walking with you guys says, you know, there's like an actual like tournament, like pit across town mm. where they do bigger fights and such. And there's like monsters. <gasps> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's tech. Well, it's kind of a two use. Th well, it's used for a bunch of things, but one of the big ones is people who get in like a lot of trouble. Like, I mean, a lot, like killing people and things like that. It's actually like a, like a, not an execution pit, but like a punishment thing. Oh, shit. Holy fuck! Uh, that's, um, that's dark, Bull. Yeah, that's well, dark as hell. Yeah, but not a lot of crime in the city. Yeah. Can't, can't, it's, can't use only, guns there? Can't do crime if you're dead. Uh, I think you can use just about anything, ah. but it depends on like the circumstances. Because if it's somebody who's really bad, like killed a lot of people, then we just fucking throw them in and let things eat them. 
Um, but oh, if it's I, like, yeah. it's only people that were absolutely sure they did the thing. So it's not like, you know, someone gets accused of murder and we just let them get eaten. It doesn't work like that. But, yeah. Hmm. And people go there to, like, settle disputes and there's, like, uh, you know how people do, like, duels for honour and that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. You know, that really horrible, mas toxic masculine shit? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that happens there. Um, huh. Yeah. We can go duel for a lady's hand. Yeah, that does happen a you lot wanna... more often than it should Kit, you want to go duel for a lady's hand? Yeah, and then I can give it away when I'm done. <laughs> Be like, I won this, but I don't want it. I'm shooting for my own hand. Um, oh my but he, he shrugs. He says, uh, one time I actually fought there because a guy I thought I was flirting with his girlfriend. I wasn't. And he lost. He didn't die, but he lost real <laughs> bad. And she dumped him anyway. Oh. <laughs> oh, he was a dick. That that's all. His name was Dick. I don't know what his name was. Oh, I thought you said his name was Dick. It's like no, oh, he was a Dick. Gotcha. Oh, well, you're OG. I mean, sure, we can do that. Oh, you know what I forgot about? I turned to selfie. We haven't gotten you. You are equipmentless. We need to oh, get yeah. some oh, yeah. new like armor and weapons and stuff. Sundrake okay. and sundries. Sundrake, sure. sundries, and strangers. We can do that. I That's know a the weird place to go armor up. Well, I, I don't know. Where it's enchanted shit. It's like a magic pawn shop. Sweet, we could find some pawn armor. Okay. <laughs> it's an expensive I don't want magic pawn, pawn armor. shop. <laughs> Um, I want, want secondhand everything. I am no, so hipster. I think armor is probably something you shouldn't do secondhand, but probably. unless it's magical. Well, um, yeah, but guess. Ball pipes and he says there's actually a couple of really good armors over in uh, Taylor Square, mm -hmm. and uh, and he looks at Selfie and says, and I think there's uh, Luthia over there too. If you need like anything for you know instruments. Um, oh. I think the uh, the Warson family has like a shop around here somewhere. Okay. Cool. Is that who in Wake Upon Pine? Is that who Sophie got the? Sorry, the War family. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. The War Same family. Yeah. Yeah. The War family. <laughs> From the Yi family. <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh, the way you said it, I was like, I just instantly went to Mulan. It's yeah. Okay. Everything's a single fucking syllable. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, it's not how yeah. Chinese names are at all, but you know. Well, yeah. Sometimes. No, why don't we go? We'll, we can make, we'll, we'll do that. Let's go we'll get you some stuff. Because you also don't have money. I have all your money. So. Oh, God, I don't. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Let's go. And we're and we're flying. And we're walking. We're walking. Yeah. Uh Bull leads you guys out of the Urikala Square, uh, past the main street that goes between the two, and down a smaller street that leads into the square uh, square itself. Similar to the Urikala Square, there's a lot of uh red here instead of the blue. Um, there's just members of the guild everywhere just chilling out. Um, but over here you do notice um, there were no wardens in the Urikalo Square, but over here there are wardens. Um, and they seem a little... Mean. What's the word? Agitated? Gay? Not agitated, but a little like... Uh, Overly, what's the word? Purple. No, shut up. Overly, overly alert, I guess. Ah, mm. on edge. On edge, yeah, that would work. Mm. Um, 
and they're just sort of patrolling around in pairs. Um, the Talo fighters don't seem to give a fuck about them. Um, <clears throat> but uh, walking through the square, Bull points out a large uh, blacksmith shop, and you do see uh, the sign overhead. Uh, what are they actually called? Uh, I think they're just called gunsmiths. But um, Smith and Wesley. It is, it is it is a blacksmith and gunsmith shop. The gunsmith is, is on the upper Smith and floor. Wesson. Kinda. <laughs> yeah. Mossy oak. No. Trash. <laughs> um, while you guys are buying that, uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna like sneak off slightly and I wanna pull a couple of those guards. Pull? Yeah, I just wanna talk to them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So who's going first? I'll go first. Yes. Okay. Pull her into the shop. Um, Silas and Justine just go sort of walking around the square, but Bull comes with you guys because he knows everybody. Okay. Um, but yeah, you head into uh, this shop that has like all of its windows open to let the heat out because it's fucking summer. And also it's always hot here anyway. Um, and uh, you see inside there are two separate forges. This place seems to be fairly uh fairly busy most of the time right now it's sort of at a lull but on one side there is a uh goliath a little different than you're used to most goliaths are pale and sort of almost gray skinned this one is very like dark rich uh sort of brown skin which is out of place um most goliaths are descendants of stone giants um, <clears throat> and then the other one is uh, an actual fire genasi with like the completely black uh, like obsidian ebony skin and fiery long hair um, and they're both just hammering away and seem less affected by the heat of the forge um, and up toward the front, uh, standing at a long counter, and you see all these racks and uh, stands covered in items that they've already made. Um, there is a youngish girl who, at first sight, almost reminds you of uh, Ansem's granddaughter, uh, Annie. Uh, she just looks horrifically bored. She's got some muscle on her. Um, she she is also a fire genasi and looks a lot like the other one in there. Um, but she's just boredly leaning on the counter, looking down at an open book. And uh, she's got like her apron and her gloves and everything. Morning or afternoon. I don't know what time it is. It's still morning, but yeah. Morning. She, she glances up and she's like, oh, hello, how can I help you today? Um, we are looking for armor slash weapons. I know, obviously, a good place for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you pick the best place in town. One of the only places in town. <laughs> uh, I kind of look over at Sylvia, like it's for her. Um, and uh, the the girl sort of puts her hands on her hips and looks Sylvia over and says. Well, you're kind of small for plate, but I'm sure we could manage something in, like, China leather. And Sylvie kind of nods and is like, yeah, that'd be that'd be preferable. Don't want to clank clank my way all over the place. Yeah. Um, and uh, the girl glances back toward the two forges and says, let me see if we have anything that'll fit you right now. And if we need to, we can adjust some things. And she... Uh, starts rummaging around behind the counter and she ends up pulling out um, a couple different things. One is just a suit of leather armor that's around the right size, uh, can be adjusted with like straps. And uh, another one is a scale male like hauberk that would cover the uh, cover like down to the thigh and like the the arms. Um, and then, you know, chain mail. Mm-hmm. Um, or scale mail. Um, and then she does put on the counter this really beautiful, but clearly not made here, um, uh, chain mail shirt that all of the rings look so delicate 
and like almost silvery and as she sets it down she kind of does so carefully um and she motions across them she says we have uh, sets to go with all of these um leather is going to be sort of basic but you know anyone can use it uh, scale mail's not exactly the quietest thing, if that's something you're worried about. And she taps on the last one. She says, this is an import. This is elven, uh, chain. Okay. I mean, we might, maybe not immediately, but we might be doing something stealthy, so I don't want to... But it's up to you. It's it, Sylvie. It's up to you. I, I got money. Uh, let me check how much Elven chain costs. Because I think Sylvie wore. It was just a regular chain mail, I believe. Yeah. But I think metal armor takes away your. Uh, oh yeah, I had disadvantage on like tall. stealth like all the time. Yeah. Um. So obviously the leather is light armor and they can add studs to it if needed. Mm -hmm. um, chain is just, or scale is just scale, but uh, the elven chain functions as chain mail, but uh, with no, uh, no issue with stealth. Oh. Um, that's a, that's an armor class of 16 plus yeah. Actually, plus. it's just an armor class of 16, period. Yeah. It's not plus your dex mod. Yeah. But the scale mail will give a 14 plus dex mod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, yep. I don't know what her stats are anymore. Yeah. But it also says that it's plus dex mod max of two. So if she's got more than two on her dexterity, then the chain is going to be the best choice. Um, the yeah. elven chain is... I think it's a set AC, because... Hold on, I don't remember. Yeah, that's what he was saying. It is, it's 16. Yeah. I'm, I got the book out. Uh, Wait, open. what the fuck am I looking at? Unless elven chain is different. This is just regular chain. Hold on. Oh, chainmail. It's a mithril. Um, mithril. Mithril. It's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. I do not have... That book is packed for me. I do. Uh, somewhere. Because I'm packing up my books to move. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. This uh -huh. this uh, price break is brought to you by um every furniture store that's gone out of business in the past three months. So all of them. All furniture stores. All furniture stores. You used to be able to get furniture there. Can't anymore. Now all you can get is. Nothing. Way go to Wayfair Deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had so many people where I'm like, I'm looking at buying furniture for my new place. And they're like, oh my God, the, all these stores you should go to. I was like, yeah, for they're sure all that all of them are out of business. Dead. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, because I've been thinking about getting a new couch, but then it's like, well, I don't know anywhere that's open anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's there's a place, I can send you the link, um, but there's a place that has similar couches that Dak sent me. Okay. Uh, I just have to find the name of it. It's a weird yeah. name I hadn't heard before, but there is one here in GR. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can find it. But yeah, I... I was looking at stuff online and I was like, I could buy a $3,000 couch and like hope right. that it's nice. Or I could buy a $500 couch that I've sat on before and I actually liked right. and not break the bank. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm leaning towards that $500 couch, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is also so weird because I don't know any of Sylphie's stats anymore. So, like, I don't know what the best <laughs> armor is. Right. Or, and then also I don't want to be like, I'm making all the decisions and stuff. <laughs> but. She gets to make her own decisions now. Yeah. yeah which is weird. That's, that's the... Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. Hmm. I found the name. Oh. I'll send it to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh nope, spelled it wrong. Thanks, autocorrect. They do have an online store as well, but there's wow. apparently a shop here in gotcha. West Michigan somewhere. Sorry, I was wrong. It does not function quite like chain. Um. Okay. Oh, a chain. Elven yeah. chain. Elven chain. Elven chain. What song is that? It's Purple Rain. Oh, yeah, I don't know that one. Um, that's like all I know from that one. Okay, so. Why are these not the same? Hapa. Hapa kawaka. So I've hit a weird, like, problem here. Uh oh. Um, I hate when where that happens. The book just says a bonus plus one to AC. Oh. Oh. I mean, we could Google it. That's my problem. Is the what I've found sort so, of contradicts what I would expect. According to Rule 20, it says it has an AC class of 13, and you just get a bonus of plus one to AC while you wear the armor. And consider proficiency it... if you lack proficiency with medium armor. Oh, so that's the bonus. Is It comes with a low AC, 13 plus one. Oh. And so it's not, it's not plus your dex modifier is what they're getting at because a lot of the armors are plus your decks. Yeah. So in this one, they're saying it's 13 plus one and you don't have to be proficient in medium armor in order to wear it. Mm. So this would be something for like magic casters. Yeah. This would be something you could give to yeah. a magical person or people with zero AC. So yeah. sorry. It's not as good as I thought it was. Okay. Um, it looks cool. It does. Um, <laughs> There is, however, dragon scale mail. <gasps> Dragons? Dragons? But you would have to kill a dragon to be able to make it. Oh. oh. What, well, the, what does this fucking look like? Skyrim? Going to... <laughs> yeah. What are we going to go off and do in like two days? <laughs> oh, Ted's already got to take care of. We're good. Oh, sure. That so dragon is going to be an armor. egg roll. <laughs> There's yeah. dwarven plate. Uh, all kinds of shit. Wait, There's a Ifriti chain. What did Sylphie dual class in? Bard and... Paladin. Oh, Paladin. we could put yeah. her in some fucking dwarven plate mail. Well, we were... I think we, we floated around plate mail, but then it's like... I don't know. She's gonna be, like, noisy as fuck. Eh. Running around. True. And she can use it, but... Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Actually, that's a good idea. We're gonna put her in just a full metal sphere. Yes, yeah, suit of armor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? I. Yeah. Um, so Sylphie looks over those and is like, "These are these are okay, but I don't want to die again." <laughs> I. It, they, they're fine. Like that. Okay. What do you want? Do you want to get wrapped up in bubble wrap or something? Do you what? what? Um, the old bubble wrap. She looks at the at the uh, blacksmith and says, "Do you have anything like heavier?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me, yeah, one second. And she goes and uh, brings out, kind of has to wheel it out on a rack. Um, brings out a uh, a suit of half plate. Which is still medium armor, um, but it's uh, 
it's sort of almost like plating over leather padding. Um, she says, we also have like full on splint and plate mail, but that stuff's kind of expensive. Um, and Sylphie says, how much for half plate? And uh, the girl says, uh, we would probably at your size go with about 750. Um, if that's too much, we do have breastplate, which is more like centered around the torso Just while the leaving while leaving the limbs, except for like, you know, simple plates, mostly uh, free and uh, won't get in your way quite so much. And that, uh, that's not too much. It's if you want that, if you want the half plate, that's fine. Um and uh Sylphie spends a minute trying on the half plate and it's it looks good on her as she as the blacksmith shows shows her how to put it on um and it like makes her look like bulky and like powerful and uh but it's loud as fuck yeah um and Sylphie's like this might be a little too much um and the girl helps her get it off and then helps her try on the uh, the breastplate that they have, which is basically leather armor, but with metal on the torso. And um, as Sylphie gets it on and sort of tries it out, it's, um, it's almost, I, I don't want to compare it to like Roman armor because that's the wrong uh, image, but it does have a lot of similarities where the only places there's metal is like the wrists, the shins, um, and the, the chest and back with like a plated leather cuirass. Um, but this is not so hard to move in and uh, is not loud as fuck because it's all padded. And uh, Sylphie like tries it on, sort of rolls her shoulders and it looks at you, stretches a little bit, can has the full range of movement. She says, I think I kind of like this one. I like it. And the girl says, we'll let that one go for uh, 400 gold, and uh, I can refit some of those straps for you, punch a couple extra holes, because you're, no offense, man, but you're kind of small. Mm. And Sylvie's so like, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I will give her 400 gold. Mm -hmm. right. Sylvie now has breastplate, which is an AC of 14 plus up to two dexterity. Perfect. And then, what about weapons? Your sword's gone, so. Yeah, I didn't really use a sword a whole lot, but I, I'm sure it's smart to. It's not true, but. It right. is. It is. You did more magic than. Well, than yeah, but like she also she used the sword, a little bit. A little bit. Um. <laughs> What kind of sword was it? It was a great sword. Oh, fuck yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh... She got it when she became a paladin. Oh, the, um... Wait. Are we talking about... No. It wasn't the whalebone. No. Sword. The whalebone... I still have the whalebone knife. Because that was in her... Stuff on the ship so it didn't mm -hmm. also it's magical so it wouldn't yeah have... all of her magical stuff didn't yeah, disintegrate it, that yeah. wouldn't just have disintegrated but the great sword was not magical so that right. went away is gone yeah. um sylphie uh after taking off the armor uh the uh, girl lets her sort of peruse through everything that she has on hand and uh, let me actually grab the weapons list because maybe Sophie would like to try something. Because, uh, I mean, as a paladin, she's proficient in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, practically everything. Yeah. I don't know what, as the former player of Sophie. <laughs> oh, no. Do you think. Do you think she would try something new and something like interesting or do you think she would go with what she knows? No, I think like especially after literal rebirth, I think she would be like, let's try something new. Mm -hmm. try I, something I can see that. Less stupid. 
Yeah, I do kind of remember the running joke was like she didn't really. Oh, Ever every really time you took that sword, sword out, it never hit it anything. It was terrible. I uh, hated it. Um, the uh, the girl shows her through a bunch of different uh, weapons and sort of gives her a chance to play with some of them and says, and um, if you take any of these sort of one-handed weapons, we can also fit you for a shield, potentially, um, if you're worried about safety. Um, I person my favorite personally is the mall, but that's a that's going to take two hands. Uh, a hammer is always super useful. Um, and she she looks at Sylphie, sort of looks her up and down, and says, "I I definitely would recommend something one handed for you, but you could always pick up something that you could use two handed if needed." And uh, the two of them go through a few more things uh, until eventually the uh, uh, the girl brings out this um, this war hammer that has uh, it's like a single uh, like a single block of steel that has been extended at either side with a flat plate. Um, so it's like it's like Mjolnir, but with plates on the end, almost. It's, like, mm-hmm. super hefty. Um, but it's got a long enough handle that it could be thrown uh, two-handed. Uh, not thrown, but uh, swung two-handed. And Sylphie picks it up and grabs uh, grabs one of the shields that sort of fits with the style of her armor. And she looks at you and says, what do you think? Honestly, I think it looks pretty badass. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the girl sort of like corrects her use of the shield because even though Sylphie technically knows how, she hasn't used one like in a fight. Um, and uh, says, if you want to test it out, we have uh, some things out back that you can use. And uh, otherwise, I think all that suits you pretty well. And uh, Sylphie nods and sort of sets them on the counter. And uh, the Warhammer is going to be 15 gold. Oh, that's nothing. She's nothing. I give you 15 gold. And the shield shall be 10. And I give you 10 gold. And now her AC is 18. Hell yeah. Welcome to nothing the Nothing can club. kill her. Ah. She's going to outlive Marin. Oh, God, no. Oh. <laughs> She's going to go full... She's going to lean into Paladin now. But, uh, (laughs) um, yeah, you guys get everything all rung up together. uh, 425 total. And uh, the girl throws in, uh, like, a proper pack that will hold everything. Um, And even though the... Like the breastplate, it, it looks big. It can all be folded into each other and like wrapped up in a bundle. So it's not as horribly heavy or bulky. Mm. Um, and it's made in like sections so that everything can just roll together. Um, but yeah, you guys pack it all up and uh, get Sophie gets the uh, this new bag that will like properly hold it and anything else and shoulders it. And she's like, and off to school. And she just <laughs> skips out of the shop after thanking the girl. Okay. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. I run after, fun. I run after her. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. Hold on. Before. Yeah. What? I'm just giving you your own money. I'm going to give her a thousand gold. Holy shit. Well, I have like three thousand something. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, wow. that way I don't have to be your mommy or whatever if you want to buy something. That's weird. Party. Yeah, exactly. So, there, your own money. And she walks up and hugs you. I'll hug her back. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I'm uh, jerk. <laughs> I still haven't counted all the gold in that chest. Oh, yeah, that's right. I haven't. But we'll get more anyway later. How much did you take out of it? None. None. Okay. I can't yeah, remember I guess if you had. Into it at all. Yeah, I I have like almost five thousand gold just on me. So yeah. Okay. Um. 
And remind me real fast who gave you the chest. Uh, we were given Annika. the yeah. Annika gave Annika. it to us. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was her or somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I'm talking to the guards real quick. Okay. Yeah, while they skip off on their merrily way, get an armor. Um, as you walk up to a pair of these wardens, um, they've got the the very. It's not like super clashing, like pink and green. It's like a very super light, like pastel pink uh, shirts with the green and gold uh, tabards, and they all have the the one folded side like musketeer style hat with the feather and um you do see wow. all of them do actually carry uh they th either carry like a sidearm or an actual gun across their Ooh. across their back and then a rapier <clears throat> some of them have bucklers as well but uh as they're walking along patrolling looking a little nervous how do you how do you approach i just like i just walk up quietly but also in full view yeah they kind of stop and look at you as you walk up you like hello friends i uh, hello you seem <laughs> dost mine eyes deceive me you seem <laughs> tense <laughs> Free. Who's that from? It's, it's Aladdin. It's from Aladdin, yeah. Um, He's like, dust wait. mine ears deceive me. <laughs> Three. Three. You are wait. down to one bar. From what part? Uh, when Aladdin said they get out of the Cave of Wonders and he's like, yeah. oh, I still have three wishes left. And Jeannie's like, ah, does my ears deceive me? Like he, Oh, because, it was Robin Williams. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Robin Williams. Okay. I couldn't, I haven't seen that. I don't like that movie too much, but. Mm, that's okay. Uh, He's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, what, sorry, sorry, what'd you ask them? Uh, you seem tense. Is there something uh, the matter? Who are you? <laughs> the second I am, one asks. I am the high elder druid of the Elusir clan. And so... I have come to <laughs> save you all God. from whatever torment uh, torments you. <laughs> do you need money uh no i'm honestly asking like what's wrong y'all are weird oh you're not from here i guess uh no obviously. and the other one says the other one says well things have been kind of jumpy for the past year or so uh is sort of a, a little bit of a fight brewing mm, between uh well feels like everybody and uh, you do notice in particular every warden you have seen has been human including these ah. guys it says uh a lot of the folks around here don't really like us anymore did you do something I mean, we didn't, and they look at each other. I mean, um, you know what I mean. Well, uh, do you know what happened like 25 years back? Uh, yeah. Um, the other one says, well, that kind of left a, kind of left a bad taste in everybody's mouth for wardens and humans, especially. Mm -hmm. Uh... And lately, some people have been getting very vocal about it. How are you addressing it? Are you talking to people or are you all just acting um, like you're scared? Wait, you, what? We're not, we're not scared. What? Really? The buddy system? Well, you guys walking around like a bunch of stiff assholes? The, the pair is... Everyone walks with a partner in on any continent in the Wartons. This is normal, but... Uh, yeah, we're nervous. Okay. Okay. And there's a bunch of people who haven't been making it better. Have you had a town meeting or, like, talked to people? 
Are you just going to ignore the problem until it blows up? It... Listen, it's not... I'm just asking. We... We want to make... We... They point to themselves. Like, we would like to have things be better. But... We're... Scared of people, and they're scared of us. Mm. And... Sometimes things don't go very well when there's trouble. And the people in charge don't like us either. Because they were here 25 years ago. Ah. Interesting. Yeah. It's not super great for us here right now. No, but... But we are... We're working on it. And the... The, uh, the High Warden is here trying to, you know, smooth some things over, but there's just been a lot of shit going on lately that's made things worse. Like what? Like thieves and there was this building that blew up the other day, like a week ago, that nobody knew what happened, so they immediately blamed us. Which building is this? Um, he actually points uh, off to the southwest and says, uh, in the uh, Gurul uh, district, there was, I guess, this uh, this uh, like laundry house where people take their stuff to have it washed by the, these this business. This this is something that existed before but doesn't really exist in modern times um, mm -hmm. where people would be paid to do laundry for people in like huge yeah. batches um, says there was a, this laundress and like all her workers who were doing really good and then someone blew the place up mm. like I don't know how laundry soap blows up a building it doesn't it doesn't so we don't know what happened and it wasn't like it burned down. It straight up blew up. Any clues? I mean, everything was blown to shit. There was nothing left to find. Just the foundations. Hmm. Okay. And because we couldn't really arrest anyone right away, everyone got really mad. Interesting. So, it sounds uh, like a problem. It is. So Laura's here trying to smooth things over. Laura Bain? Yeah, Warden Bain. <laughs> Shit! Laura Where's Laura Bain? I want to talk to Laura warden. Bain. She's the high warden, yeah. Uh, I and have some... Natalie, anyway. Is it the... Yeah. She's at the warden place, like the building? What? She's at the warden what? building. I mean, she's at Kalamai Hall. Good to know. I'll see you guys later. Okay. Uh, first thing I want to do is Are I... in trouble? No, not at all. You're fine. You're fine. Don't worry. The end is near. Um, <laughs> and then I... Uh, <laughs> um, I want to go... I see Sylphie and Marin come out. I'm assuming I saw them. Yeah. And I'm going to look at Sylphie and be like... You know, I never thought about it, but a shield is a really good idea. Yeah? I'll be right back. And I run into the, the shop. Okay. The girl who's, like, putting stuff away that she showed to Sylvie and Marin um, sees you come in and says, Hi, how can I help you? Hi there. Yeah, so I need a shield um, that's made Any... of wood. Okay. Uh, and... You know, if you have like a cool shaped one or like a fancy one or something, like I'm totally down with that. Um, something naturey or like watery or something. One second. And she uh, walks into the back and she comes out with a couple different styles of shield. One is a wooden round shield that the only metal part is the boss in the center that holds it all together. Mm -hmm. It would count as a wooden shield. Okay. Um, and then the other one is a uh, a kite shield or an up a teardrop shield that has the like 
curved top and then the pointed bottom mm -hmm. uh, and sort of curves in so you can hold it like super close in against you. Um, and the last one is a square shield with um, a chunk cut out of the corner. It's meant to be used with spears. Oh. Um, and she, she lays them out in front of you um, and says, this is what I have ready right now. Um, I mean, the teardrop shield would probably be the most nature -y, I guess. It's technically a cavalry shield, but it, it would work. Mm -hmm. Um, and then she points to the round shield with the boss. She says, but that one, that one is more sort of easily customizable, can be painted. I mean, all of them can be painted, but that's yeah. the most classic one. Um, I think I'll take the teardrop shield, actually. Okay. And she, she has you like hold it and she fits a strap for your arm correctly. And that'll be tan gold. You have it. Anything else? Uh, do you have anything that would like cause an explosion? Like any like black powder or anything like that? You want to talk to the gunsmith upstairs. I will keep that in mind. I'll be back. Um, okay. Shit, where's please me? don't blow it up inside the city. I will do my best not to blow up this shield. Um, I can't remember what you guys know about Laura Bain. Oh, I used to send Laura Bain messages to fuck with her constantly. Uh -huh. um, she was Dana's contact. Yeah. Uh -huh. I am going to uh, go back out to Marin and Selfie. Hmm. Be like, okay, I got a shield, so now I can, you know, don't know why that didn't dawn on me before. Are you proficient but... in shields? Yes, I am. Okay. As Plus a druid, two. as a druid, I am. Yeah. Now my AC is nineteen. Yeah, um, as long as it's as long as it's wood, and you're good to go. Yep. Uh, so, sorry, I'm trying to get to campaign here. Laura Bain. I'm gonna find these. Um, so I heard an interesting bit of news, Sylphie. Yeah. Do you remember Warden Laura Bain? Wasn't she kind of a bitch? She's definitely kind of a bitch, um, but she's here. And that concerns us how? Well, so I was talking to the guards, and they said that my notes literally say, Laura Bain hates me sending. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um... You're not the so, only player character to fuck with her. Yeah. Laura Bain was there when we saved Carol and his family. Yes. Um, yeah. So I was talking to the guards and they said that tensions are a bit high right now between the humans and the non-humans because um, someone blew up a laundry facility. And that's a weird target? Well, apparently there's, like, some tension. Yeah, it's a weird target. But there's, like, some existing tension between them. And someone blew it up, and they couldn't figure out who it was. But they said Laura Bain is here. And I would... And that's our problem how? It's, it's not our not problem, bad. but, you know, this is Bull's home. Maybe we could try to ease yeah. the tensions here a little bit by seeing if we can find anything. You think we're going to end like decades long? No, racial Abs tension. Absolutely not. I just want Gosh, to. It sounds kind of like this has happened before. Stop. I just want to like try to maybe um like give them the first step in a good direction or something. Okay. You know, do some good while we're here. Oh. Okay. If that's your idea of fun. Well, but first of all, I want to go fuck with Laura. <laughs> I don't even know who that is, so. She's, all you need to know is that she's rude as fuck. She's not rude. Kit's just, Kit just rubbed her the wrong way. Yeah, that To tracks. be fair, that's not difficult to do. Mm. Um, not with her. Not she's with you. kind of high strung. And high strung. Mm -hmm. Ah. 
Astrid. Um. It's Oh. <laughs> I have seen so much adult content with McCree recently, and I don't know why. Oh, God. It's just been popping up places. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, um, it's kind of hot. Okay. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> and then I, yeah, let's go to the warden. Let's go talk. Let's go talk can to the police. Just, can we just walk in? Is that allowed? Oh, absolutely. She knows me. We're buddies. Don't you guys have some sort of thing that gets you in with places? Like the little badge thing? I think Sylphie's got destroyed. It well, she had it. Uh, I don't know if I her? had one. Yeah. Did Jax well, have one? When or, she got, when or she got disintegrated. I don't know if she would be. Yeah, there. where else would it be? Well, because she had a bunch of, like, stuff on the ship. Oh, uh, that's true. Um, yeah, because that's how we even have the hairbrush. And mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'm going to so. say, considering you guys were still in Harris, and you may have dealt with water marshals along your way, she would have kept it on her. Mm-hmm. Okay. As that just, like, sense. a quick, like, pull it out from her yeah, yeah, jacket yeah. and be like, here okay. you go. I don't know if Kit ever She's had one, gone. but I think Jax might have. I think Sylphie kept... Jax's would have been in her bag, so you guys still would have one. Oh, oh okay. we do? Okay. Then, okay, yeah, we've got this badge, so let's let's go. I'm I'm the actual, like, warden give. Okay. She takes it. Pins it to, like, the front of her chest. Let's, uh, let's go. It says, actually, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> she, like, puts it in her <laughs> coat... <laughs> I'm I'm half human, so like it may not be a good idea. Yeah, that's the other thing is like most of our party is human or humanish. I'm not human. So yeah, I'm aware. But we are and Silas and Justine are. Oh, are they? Uh, yes. Silas and Justine are human and I never asked. Sophie and Sophie yeah. and Marin are half elves. <laughs> yeah. So It seems like a rude thing to walk up to somebody and be like, Are you human? Honestly, I though, mean, with some people, it's a fair fucking question. Uh, it's true. Yeah. Honestly, you wouldn't um, be able to tell with us, except for we got the pointy ears, so. Mm-hmm. Wear a good hat and you won't know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go fuck with Laura. Okay. Sure. And Sylvie starts walking. Hell yeah. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. We're going this way. Okay. Okay. We're going to that way. Calamai Hall. Yeah, Calamai Hall. Uh, so, uh, Calamai heading Hall. out of the Tala Square, you guys head uh, southwest, and you find the uh, one of the triangular bastions and follow the wall into the Inner Citadel. Um, the Citadel. The Citadel. Um, <laughs> but uh, you pass by the Court of Kalani and uh, up to the gates that leads into the actual citadel itself. And you do see that the gate is pretty heavily guarded, mostly by wardens and city guard. Um, They're just sort of posted along the edge of the wall, and then there's multiple overlooking the gate. And the gate is open, the gate and portcullis. Um, And there seems to be people fairly freely passing through, um, and as Sylphie, like, walks up, she's, like, looking at the wardens, like, are you gonna stop me? Are you gonna stop me? And none of them do. Um, and she just strides on through like she belongs there. All right, we'll all go on through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys are not stopped. Um, and as you make your way up the road, make my way, uh, I was gonna do it first. Fuck you. Um... <laughs> Uh, head up to the actual hall, you see this long um, what almost looks like a long house uh, style building, but the walls are made entirely of stone. Uh, the roof is made of more replaceable materials, like a combination of uh, wood and then like a couple smaller stones to like hold things in place. It's definitely made with the idea that the roof is going to get torn off occasionally by storms. So we may as well just make it like replaceable. 
Um, and then if you look at the shape of Calamai Hall, you may notice that there's one part of it that's like this big, big, like, square. Um, that is way taller, uh, about six floors, and it is a large, entirely stone sort of castle looking building that has barred windows everywhere Ooh. it appears to be perhaps some type of prison mm. and it is attached onto the side of the hall uh, the hall itself is two floors tall but like super super long and people are just passing in and out of it freely whereas nobody except for wardens are like splitting off to go toward this prison tower um on the grounds, you do see off to either side, there are, like, gardens and stables and uh, all sorts of, like, utility buildings. Um, sort of similar to what you'd find uh, on the grounds of, like, a palace or castle anywhere else. Um, and from the decoration that you see here, it's all pretty rugged now. But you do see like broken statues and bits of decoration here and there that make you think this may have once actually been a palace. Um, you see like statues of, oh, what would they have here? Uh, probably, uh, Ben, I, I think you'll know better what I'm talking about. Do you remember what a coral is? A what? A coral. Like, um, a so reef? from final, from what? Like a reef coral? No, coral. Oh. Um, from no. Final Fantasy, it's a gigantic, like, cheetah looking cat with the long, like, whiskers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The tail, and they're, like, fucking scary. Mm -hmm. Um, they're similar in some ways to displacer beasts in, in shape, but not, like, function uh you see statues of these corals kind of in a similar style to like the stone dragon from mulan um or like the uh the foo dog statues and uh, you see these all over the place and you see a few uh shattered statues that were probably once horses and drakes with their riders and they're all overgrown with like moss and vines at this point um, and then there's some areas of the property, while it's well kept up, there's some areas where just straight up jungle trees have grown out of control and are just towering. Um, but for the most part, it's accessible. And as you get up to the front of the long hall, um, you do see that this portion of the building is much, much older. It's covered in moss and vines and uh, there's... Uh, it almost looks like at some point there was uh, almost a moat dug around it, but it's been filled in. So now there's just sort of a small depression in the uh, dirt. And uh, the main doors are wide open and people are just coming in and out. Just mostly pe people dressed a little more nicely, like on business. And uh, you see plenty of wardens, plenty of city guard. Uh, no Tala or Urikala fighters. You would see those through the rest of the city, but not here. Um, and you do notice most of the people here working here who look official, like not the wardens or city guard, but like the people who look like they're in charge, they are not human. Um, but a lot of the uh, guard force and sort of underlings seem like they're human. Um and as you walk in, you see uh, the entire hall is split into different sections where people have, like, offices. And then there's a big section that is actually a feasting hall. Um, and toward the back, there's a, uh, there's a stairway, a large, large spiral staircase that goes up. Um, and there's not a whole lot of people going up the stairs, so you can start to guess that maybe it's more like private or living quarters. Um, you do know from Bull that the Lord of Calamai Hall, and therefore the governor of the city-state of Calicar Harbor, works here. Um, and uh, so do most of the officials. And then there are doors that lead into the prison area. Um, I will grab a nearby guard. Okay. So, uh, you, you find one of the Calicar, uh, guards who, uh, like I said, most of them are human. Um, 
and uh, most of them don't look like they're from here. A lot of them are like super, super pale, and most of the people who are from around here are much darker. Uh, sort of like, you know, white people versus actual Hawaiians. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he he speaks with a Harassian accent when you when you uh, talk to him. What do you say? Uh, hey there, buddy. Hello. Hi, uh, we need to talk to Laura Bain. Um, who are you? Uh, you can say that Kit is here to see her. Okay. And that it's urgent. Like how urgent? Like, I have a message from Dana, urgent. Should I know who that is? Dana Fioris? Yes, you should. You're talking to a guard, not a warden. Oh, you should know. That's a dangerous name in these parts. Make an intimidation check. (laughs) Eleven. Um, he motions toward uh, one of these offices and says, you can make an appointment with the secretary. Sylvie, where's the badge? And Sylvie just strides up. She's put on like the um, the arm guards and whatnot from her new armor, so she looks a little more like not tough, but a little more like she means business. And she just opens up her like uh, coat and not coat, but like vest, and shows the, <laughs> the badge. And he's like, "Oh, uh, you you're from Natalie?" And she says, "Yep." And he says. Uh, she's upstairs, uh, the second office on the right. And Sylphie nods very curtly and says, thank you, and starts walking. Beware of Dana Fioris, and then I just go. Marin's just kind of like, thanks. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, Sylphie heads toward the uh, the staircase, and you guys notice that there is not a whole lot of decoration on the inside of this longhouse. It's all very Spartan. There's not anything unuseful in here. It's like all tables and chairs and like occasionally there's like a, a plant, but that's it. There's no tapestries. There's no carpets. There's no like pretty chairs or like nice tablecloths or anything. It's all, very utilitarian um getting to the staircase however it is very beautifully carved and sort of uh made to look like wrapping vines uh carved into the wood looks very old and like dinged up um like it underwent some some serious abuse at some point but the actual steps themselves are all newer wood so they're they're not like gonna collapse out from under you And uh, Sylphie just strides up the staircase and into the hallway up there where it's much, much quieter. Mm -hmm. And again, very utilitarian, no runners, no like tables with little decorations on them. Everything is just, it's just a hallway with a bunch of doors and stone walls. Um, And Sylphie walks down to the uh, indicated door and you see on the front of it temporarily nailed into or temporarily hung up on a nail on the door there is a sign that says uh warden bane and selfie tip taps on the door and inside you can already hear people talking but you hear a familiar pissed off voice Ah. say i said don't disturb me and I said, let me in. <laughs> There's no response for a moment. And then the door just flies open. And you see this slightly short uh, brunette woman, long, long hair pulled back in a very, like, uh, almost military bun. Uh, the full green coat of the uh, of the Nataline, uh 
or no, sorry, the full green coat of the uh, Calicar slash Nataline uh, Wardens, the dark trousers, and um, you see these like really intense, just green eyes just stare out at you all. And then she sort of pulls back and says, Oh, God. Hey, Laura. What do you want? I have come to solve all of your problems. Who? What was your name again? Really? Is that what we're going to do? It's been a while. Has it? It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, (laughs) My name is Kid. Yeah, you're Dana's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she turns and looks at uh, Sylphie and says, and I see you're still putting up with him. And uh, she looks at Marin and says, and who the fuck are you? Uh, Marin Veneer. What's up? Wait. What? Marin Veneer? Oh, no. Uh, y- yes. Oh, no. Uh... <sighs> Please don't tell me you two. And she motions to Kit and Sylvie. Please don't tell me you're involved with this. I mean, they're related, so. What? What? <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. The, 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 what exactly, like, how exactly is my reputation preceding me? Because Arbiters? Oh. Silas Moore? That. Oh, thing. You know. Do you have any idea what's happening in Harris right now? Maybe we should go inside and talk about this and behind closed doors. Yeah. 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 All right. What's Good happening in Harris? Because I hope you have a real good story. Otherwise, you're not leaving. It's it's actually a pretty darn good story. Actually, let's go. Let's go. And let's she go. steps out of the way. And you already see one other warden sticks his head out of an office. And she just waves him away. Um, Be gone, you peasant. Step in. You step into yet another utilitarian office. Mm. The only decoration, I guess, is like a bookshelf with a couple little statues on it, but it's mostly just books. Um, And she closes the door, pulls like a couple extra chairs in for you guys, and she goes and sits behind her desk. Who was she Um, talking to? Huh? Who was she talking to? I was fucking getting to it. Oh, sorry. Kit, with your passive perception, because I believe yours is the highest. It is 21. um, you, as you step in, you're like, wait a minute. And you glance and you see out of the corner of your eye, there's a drow standing in the corner. Uh, just sort of arms crossed, short silver hair, dark, almost purple, blue uh, skin. Just standing there, completely black outfit. Does he look, look familiar? We don't know him, yeah. You've seen him before. Who is he? He was in Laura's office, I believe, last time you guys were there. Oh. But you okay. don't know him. I'll walk up to him and hold my hand out. I'll be like, hi, I'm Kit. Nice to see you again. He unfolds one arm, shakes your hand, says, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. What'd you say? It's <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm sorry, what was your name? I didn't hear that. And Laura looks at him and says, it's fine. He's not dangerous, I don't think. He's just an idiot. Uh And the drow (laughs) kind of chuckles and says, no, no, I'm pretty sure this one is dangerous. Why would you say that? Oh, Uh, my God. Are you going to be offended that you're not dangerous or that you are? Pick a side. I guess we'll find out what your answer is, yeah? My name is Truman. Truman. Mm-hmm. Wow. Are you true? That's, uh, okay. Well, it's nice to meet you, Truman. You can make an inside check, because I feel like you don't believe him. It's just a terrible name. <laughs> Nat one. Oh, God. It's just a terrible name. <laughs> Thanks. Uh. For in for insulting my creativity? Your creativity? Yes. Wait, what? Did you make it up? This is me talking. Oh. I thought you were t- I was talking to him. No. <laughs> no. Thanks. Uh, Can, Dick. Does he look any sort of familiar to me? To like, you? 
Yeah. Uh, how, in what way? Does he look related to either Venrith Corsair or Kellogg? He does look surprisingly like Corsair. It's not okay. Corsair, but he looks well, yeah. like him. I, I would recognize he be, that. He might be a little older. Yes, you do recognize oh, him. Oh, older? Oh. A little tiny bit older. I... Hmm. I look at him. I like kind of get close. I'm like, you look like somebody I know. I'm sure I do. Huh? How do you feel when the moon's out? <laughs> Pretty good. Oh. Okay. All I right. kind of like my hand casually is resting on my gun and just like he, his eyes immediately dart down to your gun, but he does not seem concerned. Hmm. Does the name Corsair mean anything to you? That would be my last name, yes. Hmm. I didn't know there were more than one of you. Mm-hmm. There's mm. five of us, actually. Oh, my God. Siblings? Mm-hmm. Are you all aware? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Tell me something. Yes. Do you know where Venrith is? Yes. So he hasn't been kidnapped? Well, he was. But you got him out? Nope. He get himself out? Venris is very resourceful. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, Laura is just sitting in the back, just like, are you all just going to... All right, fine. What do you want to know? Well, what do just, you want to know? Just FYI, Corsair person, that uh, they're after one of you. They only need one, so... Yeah, so be just, on your guard. Just be on your guard. And he reaches inside of his jacket and writes down. It says, and who's after us? Uh, the Heidelin cult? Yeah. Mm, okay. They want to turn one of you into a walker. Yeah. And he kind of stops for a moment at that. He's like, interesting. Del and Dane. We, we assumed that the wolfy one was who they were after because that would be a lot more useful. Yeah. But since you're all very aware, um, then... You know, you would. Any of you will do. Hmm. Anyway, I turn back to Laura Bain. All right, what do you want to know? What do you? What's? You're you're the. Okay. So. I'm just gonna level with you because you look like you're not a complete and total bitch like most of the people I deal with. Well, thank you. You're what a compliment. Level Laura. And you seem not shifty. That uh, is great. that is false, but continue. Uh, not shifty in the way I'm used to dealing with anyway. But uh, um shifty like that and I jab back over to Truman. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah. I kinda look he's, at him, I'm like, you're he's fine. you pretty shifty. He's, I know who he is. Truman is the name we use for him. Ah. Uh. And I would thank you if you didn't tell anybody anything else about him. Yeah. 100% yeah. Sure. a secret. Anyway. Marin Veneer is a name that has been crossing my desk a lot lately back in Port Natalene. Especially when it comes to the Arbiters and the Caskers. I am told that Silas Moore III has stolen a good portion of the Arbiters' treasury and fled with his fiancée. And apparently married at some point because he's starting to call himself Silas Veneer. I mean... All pretty accurate so far, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are aware that Silas Moore is the king of the Arbiters? No, had no idea. Listen, I don't need this, the back chat. It was one of those things where after you get done consummating the marriage, you were like, <laughs> oh my god, by the way. Yeah. By the way, I'm the king of the dicks, yeah. Yeah. So you know that as a warden, and therefore as an ally to the Caskers... He is my enemy. He is no longer part of it. 
part of that anymore. But he's still king of the Arbiters. We're working on trying to fix that. All right. How much do you know about the Highland Staves or the Highland Cult? Uh, let's just say I've helped Kenna out a lot. Hmm. Well, you probably aren't aware that Kenna is currently inside of a tree. Oh, right no, now. I'm aware. Okay. That was, uh, we helped out a lot with that, so you're welcome. Um, oh, no. And she looks at Kit. What? You're, oh, god damn it. What? What? You're that group. Mm hmm. And I'm gonna whip out Flameheart. Staff she form. immediately pulls out her own gun. No, I staff form. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she like goes for like her hip, but stops when she sees a staff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, have you been informed as to what we're doing with these things? Vaguely. Yeah. We're trying to help. Hmm. All right. And trust um, me, we, Silas and I, and our whole group, at some point, are going to set the Arbiter straight again. Please tell me that sometime soon. Well? That's kind of low priority on our list right now, but, hmm. um... At some point, it's something that we want to do. Well. But with Silas's betrayal, that isn't going to be entirely easy. We are working on trying to take out Cynthia Moore before we do Good. that. Good. Good. And put Justine Moore on the throne. Isn't after. she in Caladrops? Hmm. <laughs> Oh, God. No. You guys are so behind. Yeah, gee. <laughs> so you guys know about, you know about what happened at Haven, but you don't know that Justine isn't in Calidros anymore? She's not, again, not high priority. Ah. She's too young and unlike Cynthia for us to be worried about her at this point. I mean, that's fair. So, what exactly has been going on in Harris? We haven't been over there in months. Well, the Arbiters have been uh, aggressive. More so. Mm. More so. Much, Sounds like Cindy. Much more so. Um, they have just taken over Wick Upon Pine, which was previously neutral ground. Oh, they're spreading. And uh, not too long ago, I got a message from Lachmanos, uh, the western coast, that a group of Arbiters had set up a uh, camp, or sorry, the northern coast, that the group of, a group of Arbiters had set up a Cascus Val-sponsored camp. So essentially, the slave owners in Cascus Val have set them up just a nice little home in northern Lachmanos, so that they have a safe place to run their slaves to and from. Great. And a lot of people are going missing in west, uh, eastern Harris right now. And uh, I understand that Cynthia Moore is not really the one heading all of it. Someone else has taken over the reins. Cynthia remains the regent as long as the king is not there. But some... I don't even know who at this point. Someone else has taken over the actual reins of the Arbiters, not Moore's Rest itself. So you have no idea who it is? No. We think it may be another Moore, but we don't have proof. Shit. It's someone who is an arbiter. Shit. It could be Silas's brother. Is well, he a dick? Relating to that, we no, know. No, he actually kind of likes him, so I don't know. But it could be. It another is not Lauren Moore. 
Oh, okay. So I know who you're that. talking about. Yeah. Um, now we have reason to believe that if it is a Moor, it can't be Lauren because we know what he's doing. What is Lauren doing? He's a chaser for okay. the Guild of the Gate. Where, oh. Is he in Constanos then? I believe he may be there, or he could be in Skogerheim with the actual guild in northern Garadaldathas. I'm not his superior, so I don't know. He's not a warden. Well, um, that's, that's good to know. My, my husband was wondering. He's, he's a good one. I've met him a few times. But we do know that Leroy is currently in the custody of the Caskers. He was uh, apparently turned in by his girlfriend, who then used that leverage to get quite the reward and become a Casker herself. Uh, so that leaves Holt. I've never met Holt, right? No. Okay. You've never let. You've never met. You may have seen Leroy in passing. But, um, so among the three remaining brothers, they each have their own reputation. Lauren, before he ran off, was always sort of considered similar to Silas. Very thoughtful, very, like, think-before-acting. Um, but more so than Silas, he was, um, very, uh sort of grave and serious but also very much a what i say he's more serious than silas holy shit yeah 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 um and more uh more concerned with doing what was good for moore's rest instead of the arbiters which is one of the reasons that he kind of got ran off by his other siblings um leroy is the psycho of the remaining uh, oh boy. of the remaining siblings. He takes such joy in what the Arbiters do. And so he's like a super high ranking Arbiter. Like if Silas was out of the picture and they weren't attached to Moore's Rest, he would be in the running to be their leader. So he's almost like Admiral-esque, but pirates. Um, and then Holt is similar to Leroy, but without the ambition. He just kind of likes, you know, anytime he gets some money, he spends it all on drinking and and whores and whatever. And mm -hmm. um, he doesn't plan for the future. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, Short well, that's good to know. Um, We're not sure if it's him, but we have at least the suspicion that he is involved. Uh, um, and what with Leroy being out of the picture now, his fleet that he commanded is going haywire. They're trying to find him, and we have reason to believe that they're planning on attacking Port Nadaline. Not anytime soon, but eventually. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay, cool. Just add that onto the list of shit we of shit we need to do. Um, I think the Caskers can at least handle Port Nataline. It's the broader yeah reach. That's, that's more of what I was talking about. Yes, and Lachmanos is a problem we've been working on for ever since the Arbiters, since before the Arbiters started, since before the Calamity. It it's been a problem forever. Do you know where Kellogg is? Kellogg? Yes. Who is Kellogg? We... Uh, he's a slave trader. Wait, wasn't he... Wasn't he that shopkeeper you guys burnt his place down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wait. No, I don't know that. In Brickwall? Yeah. Cool. Um, no one's seen him in... The city is he important? He is a. We we already knew that he was a slave trader, but is he more important than that? What well, do you know about Alistair Altera? That he is 
kind of a useless dick. Uh, <laughs> well, he's a useless dick who is now an undead lich. And Kellogg oh. is his phylactery. Yep. Kellogg yeah. is also wanted by the... I think, yeah, Kellogg's one of the ones wanted by the Heidelin cult. Is he? I thought he was. I don't think he Am is. Am I wrong? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't have the postcard with the names on it. <laughs> Hold on, I have it somewhere. Oh, I have it. Yeah, you have the names. <laughs> I just have the locations. No, uh, he's not on here. He's not. Arthur, Arza, no. Vanderlyn, Svarn, Lucas, Halladier, Avery, Moore, Miller. Okay, okay. So he's he's not, but he's still um, he's still a, a problem. Yeah. Yeah, and Laura is writing all of this down as you tell her. So not only is Kellogg super dangerous alone, he is also very dangerous with Alistair anywhere near him. Do you know where Altera is? If we did, he'd be dead already. Last, last time we heard, he was somewhere in Eris home or near Eris home. Oh, you're behind then. What? Last we heard, he was going through Irakel. Uh, where in Irakel? I believe headed south, he went uh, around the east side of Mount Gear. Okay. Did he go through the north at all? I mean, he would have had to. He I apparently at- landed somewhere in the north and started traveling by land rather than sea. I look at Kit and I'm like, you, you need to check someone at the village you need to okay I can do that make sure everybody's okay yeah we can do that I don't think that he I don't know I don't feel like he would know that we're connected to anybody there I don't feel like he would care enough yeah I'm not sure find anybody who you're connected to why would he go to Irakel I don't know there's nothing there I mean, there's a lot there. There's four major world ports, but he's not traveling through the major ports, so we don't know. I don't he's know. He's literally traveling just, he just makes, he's making a circle around the mountain, last we heard. Is not he, a circle, but like a half circle around it. Is there like, uh, what's his name? Courage wanted... The hearts of Atlaren from there that are powerful. I wonder if he's going for power. Or he could just be hiding. That's also true. That sounds so like him. We can assume Kellogg is not with him? Most Probably likely not. not, but if Alistair were stopped or destroyed, he would appear at Kellogg's side. That's good to know. Which is why Killing Kellogg seems like a better idea than actually killing Alistair. Well. So we can get the phylactery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's there's a lot on our priority list right now. Mm. I see that. It's, yeah. And it's adding to mine, so. Mm -hmm. All the help we can get would be great. Yeah. um, I have my own problems to deal with right now. Oh, Okay. Even though I would like to help with some of these overarching problems, I do have to deal with my two cities. On that note... Yes. We heard a laundry facility got blown up. Yes, it did. Uh, Any idea who or what caused that explosion? Truman. And, uh... Truman caused the explosion? No, no. He... He steps forward and says, from what I've seen, it was some sort of, well, there seemed to be two different explosions that went off at about the same time. But people in the area remember two explosions very close together, almost at the same time. One of them... I've figured out is gunpowder. The other one was some sort of chemical fire explosion. I don't know the purpose of the two different 
uh, explosives. All I know is that the portion of the building that was set off with the fire uh, completely burned away, whereas the portion that was just blown up by gunpowder did not burn away. There's the uh, gunpowder explosive, explosive was set off in the basement, whereas the fire was set up uh, on the main floor. So everything under the first floor is still intact. Sounds like Just, somebody wanted to cover something up. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. So something was on the first floor that they wanted to burn, and they knew that burning would not take out the basement because it's stone. So they set off another explosion down there, and it turned everything to dust because it was enclosed. Do we think it's just a local thing to try to stir up bad blood, or is it something else? That's one potential answer. Um, I've weighed a few different options. I, I spoke to the people who work there. Nobody was on, was working at the time they went off, so I believe it was very intentionally timed not to kill anyone. Mm. The woman who owned the place, when I asked her if she had any enemies, rivals, whatnot, um, the only thing she could come up with is that some of the laundresses also work uh, in the what the medieval version of a red light district we called Red Lantern District. Yeah. Um, well, there is a book called Raise the Red Lantern, so it would work. Um, some of them work over there, uh, and they have gotten into trouble with some clients and some uh, other men who work over there, mostly humans. Mm. All of the laundresses were orcs or half-orc. Gotcha. Hmm. Currently, so, um, the general consensus is that it is yet another issue between the races. It's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah. But the problem is that leading up to this, there were multiple smaller things. Uh, newer statues of non-human heroes and whatnot being defaced. Uh, someone set a fire at the corner of the Tala Fighter, Fighters Guild building, and it was thankfully put out in time. Uh, there's been a few murders. All wardens. Hmm. And you don't have any leads as to who it could be? Not currently. Whoever whoever has done each of these things has been extremely careful to cover up their tracks, which leads me to believe they're related. That would make sense. Interesting. Um. Hmm. Have you scanned the area that was burned for any magic or anything like that? We have. We did find that some sort of very minor spell was used, but we weren't able to figure out by who. And the, uh, the murder victims, uh, we've been trying to find somebody who can speak to them. You can't do Silas. that, can Silas? Can well, he speak with the dead? I don't know. He's a cleric. It is, is in his spell book. He's a life cleric, so it's definitely in his spell book. Good check. I, like, turn around and look at Laura. I'm like... If You're gonna bring Silas more here? Do you want help? I mean, she's... We can have him disguised. That would... That would help with the deniability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, his name isn't Silas Moore. It is to the rest of the world. Well, change it. 
Do you really want me to run around here calling him Silas Veneer and have people running after you? I mean... Sorry, there's something happening in my house. I can't. There's, like, rumbling. Ghosts. Yeah, sure. Gerald. Skinwalkers! Probably the dogs being stupid. Um, no. Emily, I mean, they're gonna come after me anyway, so might as well, right? Yeah. I I we'll see what we can do. We're also technically on vacation, and I look at Kit. I mean, but don't you like to solve a little crime to relax? I mean, I guess I don't really know what I like to do to relax, because I don't relax, but... Well, there's no gods here for you to talk to, so I guess we should do something else. Oh my god! Literally. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my... Whatever. Um, <laughs> if you want our help, we'll bring him down and we'll see if we can have him talk to somebody. If you don't want our help, then we'll just continue on like we were doing before. Up to you. I... And she looks at Truman and says, this is off the record. And he nods. I would be delighted at the help of someone capable of speaking to the dead weird we kind of know somebody huh mm -hmm. interesting please please do mm. okay we'll be back later this evening and uh just you know make sure he doesn't look suspicious we're not don't stupid. suspicious don't, don't be suspicious. suspicious. Don't be 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 suspicious. <laughs> yeah. All right. I look over at Sylphie. Are you good? Yep. This cool. is pretty, uh, pretty good. And she looks at Laura and says, see, we can be useful. And she rolls her eyes. All right. Well, let's go drop a bunch of bombs on Silas then I guess alright thank oh, you it's gonna be fun mm. bye uh, Laura it was good to see you goodbye Kit perpetual thorn in my side yeah right. perpetual useful thorn so she mm -hmm. can't get rid of them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um, but yeah, uh, Truman opens the, uh, door for you guys, and he actually walks out, not, like, with you, but, like, not too far behind you. Um, and you see him, as you get down to the, uh, the second, uh, the first floor, he breaks off toward the prison. Okay. Ooh, he's a prisoner. He's not a prisoner. <gasps> wait, wait. Like a prisoner. Can I, can I insight check him? About what? Do I think they have Venrith here? Go ahead and make an inside check. Mm. Oh, no. No. Uh, 13. Okay. You don't know. You're suspicious. So suspicious. But you don't know. Alright, I can ask him later. Truman is very straight-faced, so it's hard to tell what they're up to. Okay. Alright, let's go get... Is Truman's the pronouns they? Or... Uh, I mean, you don't know. That's true. Oh, well, you just referred to them as the, they. Yeah, Truman is... They display male. Okay. But it is unclear. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just wanted he, to make sure. Yeah. The, he, he slash they, I don't care. Okay. But they're also <laughs> so like, I mean, drows and elves have uh, naturally a little bit more of a feminine quality anyway. Um, sort of the, the sleek quality to them. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So it is it is unclear, but they appear male. Okay. okay. Just I just didn't want to misgender him. 
All right, you ready to go get Some he who must not be named? Some of them want you to misgender them. Some what? of them want to use you. Oh Some my god. <laughs> We're going yeah. to get dark and broody. Yeah, yeah. Some of them want to get used by you. The Red Lantern District. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. What you guys going? Yeah, I guess we gotta go get Silas. Mm -hmm. On the way over, I'm just gonna look at Sylphie and go, Oh, so are you having fun? I'm having a great time. Uh, I bet you are. Isn't this What the fuck? Fun? Isn't that what you want? I... Sorry, I just thought that this vacation was going to go a little bit differently and not find out that the Arbiters are even worse than they were before. It was only a matter of time. <sighs> well, S Silas and I were working really hard to fix that, and now it's gone shit. So I mean, you guys took a bunch of money and left. Yeah, I don't need the reminder. We uh -huh. also locked a guy in It was a also safe. your idea. Yeah, I don't need the reminder. <laughs> I get to blame you for things I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cuz I definitely wouldn't have done that, but yeah. yeah. I but I do feel like the the progression of the character has been like fuck yeah let's just firebomb everything to oh god there's consequences mm -hmm. yeah, works. yeah yeah it works because definitely that consequence is on me <laughs> and now Sylphie is going the other way of I have died so fuck everything yeah yeah uh, I think it's just the, the the basic difference between you and me as a player yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um. Okay, well... Are you not having fun? I... What? Be okay. Be honest. Because no. if, you, if you just want to sit around and relax, like, you can. We'll do the well, thing. how am I supposed to relax now? With By this... relaxing. Silas has to go talk to dead people, and we yeah. have to... We just added on a whole... Another arc of our <laughs> campaign. <laughs> like, I fourth don't, wall, fourth wall, man. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know how else to phrase it. But uh, listen, I'm glad that you're having fun making fun of me, and you two can get to like run around and like talk about how uptight I am and everything like that. But I have a lot on my plate right now so i'm sorry if i'm not like super happy-go-lucky or whatever also this is the first time i've ever been on vacation ever so kind of not feeling it kind of sucks actually so if this is how all vacations are they, they they don't so like go to the beach and just don't do anything i no i put my hand on sylphie's shoulder i'm like uh do you do you see a bar is there a bar nearby as she glances around. I will assist. Guidance! <laughs> Add a d4. Okay. Oh my god. 20. Um, she glances around in like fucking radar, just zeroes in <clears throat> on a bar, says there. Uh, do you want to make a quick pit stop, everybody? Sure. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go have fun. Let's she go have ran some ran. structured fun. <sighs> okay. All right. I'm going to walk into the bar. Go straight up to the bar. Mm -hmm. And be like, you hey. Into, you walk into the... Uh, the... Salty yeah. Salmon. The empty you salmon? Know, salty salmon. Oh, I was like, the empty salmon? <laughs> gutted salmon. The gutted yeah. salmon. <laughs> Actually, no, that's a great name. The gutted salmon. Oh, yeah. God. I mean, the Kala River is just right next to the town. So, yeah, yeah. The, okay. the, 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 the gutted, gutted salmon. <laughs> and it's just got a picture of a limp fish on it. Cool. It was, yeah. Great. Uh, it's, it's definitely a dive bar. It's cool. It's a... It's kind of smallish, and... What, with gutted in the title? It's a dive bar? No way. 
it, for gutted uh, salmon, it is pretty packed with furniture. It's like overcrowded. Um, oh, it's but one of there's those. not a million people in here at the moment. It's like half full. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you go in, you see the bar, which is like this sort of square in the corner. So there's two actual like bar counters. Um, and running it are two male orcs who are looking almost exactly the same. The only difference between them is one has uh, the like shaved on the sides and back uh, sides with the braid, and the other one has the hair long and loose and like full head of hair. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up to him, like, hey there, uh, this person, <sighs> Vanessa, uh, is a tight ass. So can you? Do you have, it. yeah, do you have, like, what? something really strong that preferably <laughs> comes in a coconut? Um, the, uh, comes in a what? In a coconut. The, uh, the orc with the braid who's talking to you guys reaches across and, like, pats Marin Han and says, I'm just kidding, Donna, don't worry. Um, he's and, not. Uh, well, I, je- I, like, jerk my head toward Kit and I'm like, he's not, so. Definitely not. not. Uh, let me... Let me fix you up something special. And uh, he reaches. He, he they do have like coconut drinks. It's like it's like way better than using a glass because you could just fucking toss it and it'll go away and you don't have to clean it. Um, so he he goes. There's like this this uh, like barrel in the corner and he just pops out a coconut and like pulls all the stuff off the outside and cracks it. Um, just like a hole in the top and you see him take a funnel and start pouring all kinds of shit into it. Um, a lot of it has oh, yeah, like my tie. the, the bottles have, uh, like different like paper labels on them. A lot of them look kind of sugary. Um, and then he tops that off with something just bright fucking blue. And he, Hell yes, he like hammers a cork into the hole and then just starts shaking the shit out of it. And uh, when he's done, he sticks a sticks like a wooden straw into it and sets it on this like thing on the counter that's meant to hold like a round, uh, a round shape. It says, "There you go." I slap a whole gold on the table. Yes. Just mm-hmm. like, thank you. That was a sight. <laughs> what can you. I get for you two? Um. Yeah, I want one of those too. Okay, and he looks at Selfie and says, Selfie's like, Oh, I don't uh, drink. Yeah. I don't drink. Just yeah, iced tea for me. I <laughs> forgot. I, I, this is, Ben is just like, ah, I'll take six. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the, the orc looks at you and says, Would you like a non-alcoholic version? Sure. All right. I'm like, you a coconut drink. And he goes and gets two more and does the same thing. But for yours, he pours in like... Uh, he pours in like uh, like a cordial that goes well with the uh, um, with the coconut milk and mm. a couple other things just to give it flavor. And you see him actually widen the hole a little bit and like throw a couple pieces of fruit in there for yours. Yeah, shake the shit out of it um, and serves both of those up for you guys. And uh, the gold will cover all of those and then oh. some. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. It is Yay. it is a strong rum drink for sure. Uh, but it is it like starts cool and refreshing and then gets that alcohol burn and then ends on like coconut. So it's uh smooth. Yeah. yeah. Oh it, it doesn't not like I, I say alcohol burn, but like you know the heat of alcohol. Yeah. Like you get it even from rum. Yeah. Um, but it's not like whiskey burn. It's yeah. rum burn. So it is it is smooth and it's okay. super fruity. Mm-hmm. Here 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 I am having and, some good structured fun. Uh the the I bartender drink more. I'm just like oh. The bartender actually leans on the bar cuz nobody's up there at the moment and he looks at Marin and says, "You okay, sweetheart? You look kind of stressed." 
Yeah, dude, I am stressed, okay? My whole life is just stress, so, is it, you know. Is it these two who are causing you problems? Uh, no. Like 90% of them, yeah. Okay, I get you. I get it. All well. right. Cool. Um, do you need these coconuts back? Because if not, we need to walk and, and, and drink. No, we use coconuts because you can just fucking toss them. Just uh, cool. make sure you throw them in an actual trash can. Okay, neat. Uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> neat. <laughs> guy. <laughs> thank you, person. Uh, and then I'm gonna leave. And wow, he, he just he just smiles like the the crooked like orc like tusk grin and just says, "Have a better day, darling." Mm, thanks. I kind of, as she walks out, I look back at him. I'm like, I am so sorry that she is just insanely rude all the time. I oh, know it's fine. It's fine. I recognize stress when I see it. She'll probably not get better, but thank you for trying. I appreciate it. <laughs> and I'll I'll like slide him another gold on the table and like here, just uh pay it forward. Sure, sure. Next and, person uh, who's stressed and needs to be drunk, just go for it. And he glances over at the, the other orc and the other orc nods like they're going to keep an eye out and uh, says, well, uh, if you need another one, just pop on right back. We'll take care of you. Thanks. He seems really easygoing, not bothered at all. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll follow them out. Yeah. And Sylphie, like, quietly leaves him an extra gold and walks out after damn him. these people are making fucking bank today yeah, yeah. jesus christ i'm not that bad you don't have no, to i like... mean you're super rude it would be a rule for no reason i'm sorry now real life will leave i'm uh, sorry <laughs> astrid is gonna feel <laughs> is gonna feel guilty for being rude to a fictional person i almost <laughs> finished the name and i stopped <laughs> <laughs> Turned into a Dragon Ball Z scream. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, but let's take a break right there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll all right. In ten minutes, so we'll be back at uh, seven thirty-three. All right. Sounds good. See you guys in a few minutes. Bye. And we're back, everybody. Hello. 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 I have switched to iced tea. Bienvenue, Power Bottoms. <laughs> and broccoli and chicken. I got nugs again. Ooh, that sounds delicious. They're kind of cold now, though. Oh. Kind of makes me sad. Nuke them. Mm, that's fine. I have been meal prepping lately because I've been super fucking lazy. And every day I'm just like, oh, I could just like order something or just not eat or like whatever. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've been meal prepping and making this wild rice, this wild brown rice. And it's so delicious. Hmm. I need to do that. I just got glass storage containers for food. So worth it. Hmm. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> dance monkey. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you guys head out of the gutted salmon. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Tasty. Back across town, uh, you pass by the uh, the bathhouse. Excuse me. Um, all the naked people. Mm -hmm. Yep, the shameless naked people. And uh, good for them. You head back into the. Jesus Christ. Uh, the uh, Uricala district to Fanjo Peeps. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yas. Yas. I'm just sipping on my little drink like the whole time, like. Mm. Mm. Not happy about it. <clears throat> You're happy and, about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're never happy about anything. Good lord. Uh. <laughs> Marin, I'm never pleased, Veneer. Yeah. I'm sorry. If all of this is your fault. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you did. Yeah, so. 
Yeah. Where's Should've Silas? Made better decisions back in Wars Rush, shouldn't you? Yeah. Should have made better me, decisions. Right? Yeah. It's all on your plate now. All me. Yep. All you. That was <laughs> definitely my decision. <laughs> yep. But to be fair, as Sylvie, you were like, fuck yes, let's go, let's do it. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah. For the yeah, most part. so it's still your fault. <clears throat> <clears throat> don't blame, don't blame the plot. Blame the drivers of the plot. Could still blame you, yeah. Nope. Nope, I'm just the narrator. So, mm -hmm. you guys get back to the Urikala district and eventually relocate Silas and Justine, who are... Uh, Justine looks like she's got a couple bruises. She looks like she just got done with, uh, with a little pla uh, practice fight with mm -hmm. Bull. Um, he... You can't see any bruises on him because he has fur. So It's true. He's nearby talking to his mom as she's sort of taking a break. And uh, as you guys arrive, Silas stands up sort of ambles over to you guys. Hi. Hi. Hey, buddy. What's wrong? We need to uh, go somewhere not in public. Am I in trouble? No. Yes. No. Not with Marin. Mm. Just with uh, the law. No. Sounds about right. Okay. All right. Um, and he turns back and he's like, Irina, can we uh, use, you know, your home? We have a conversation. And she nods and actually tosses a key to him, which he catches and says, all right, let's go. Okay. Do you need help? I mean, it, I can talk to him by myself. It's fine. Okay. You guys can go fuck off and whatever. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. Go, um, yeah, you know what? Go fuck off. All right. Come on. Hey, Justine, I want to test out my new shield. And Sylvie just wanders toward oh, her. Oh, God. Don't get hurt. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah, You're go so talk squishy. to your, your dude. Go away. I'm sorry. Didn't you tell us to fuck off? Bye. Bye, <laughs> Felicia. <laughs> just sip out of and, my coconut. Yeah, Silas just, like, puts an arm around you and walks you away from them. Just being like... Ignore the children. Mm. <laughs> but they're so annoying. I know. This is why we can never have children until Sylphie's at least 40. Then I'll just dump them on her doorstep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, You guys head back to Irina's house and inside and sit down at the main table. And Silas sits across from you and says, what's wrong? Hmm. You know, normal um, Marin's consequences coming to bite her in the ass stuff. Um, mm hmm The... Uh, <laughs> the Arbiters are fucked. Right we now. knew this, but I assume this is something new? It's bad, apparently. We went to the Warden's Guild, and... Um, uh, the, the contact there, uh, Kit and Sylphie know her, and mm -hmm. she says that they're, they took over Wickapon Pine, and... But that's neutral ground. Yeah, not anymore. Um, and they set up a, a camp in Loch Menos, a slave running camp. It's, it's getting bad, and it's probably not your mother who's doing it. They think it's one of your brothers, most likely Holt. So Holt's um, not smart enough to do any of that. They, they said that's a theory. Leroy is in custody right now. Oh, he the, was going to be my first guess. Yeah. Um, Shit. And she did say that <laughs> Lauren is most likely either in Constanos or in. I don't remember what the. It was school something. I don't remember what the. She, at the gate. 
Yeah, he's he's part of the guild at the gate. Um, oh, so... Wow, he actually did it. Yeah. At least he's alive. From what it sounds like, but... I don't know... Can't... We have to get your mom out of the way. I know. I was hoping that we would have some some way to get at her before the whole thing in Haven, because I'm sure she contributed to it. But yeah. white cloaks, at least the high-ranking ones, never do their own dirty work. Yeah, I have... I doubt she was even at the siege. I do as well. Um, but we we need to get Justine out there as soon as possible because things are only going to get worse. I don't want to put her in the middle of all that. I don't either, but what other choice do we have, Sai? You can't go back and... What? Tell your brother, like, <laughs> hey... The, the, the jokes, the, the, like jokes on you. Actually, you can't be a chaser. You have to go back and be on the throne. I, Lauren, he he can't be a king. He would. It wouldn't suit him. So. We don't have many other options. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... We shouldn't... I... It all comes back to me and my stupid Stop. impulse control. Stop. It... No, no. We all agreed with you and backed you up when you made those decisions. Just because it was your idea doesn't mean it's your fault. I wanted to make things better there. You did too. And we just did the opposite. We don't know if Moore's Rest is any worse right now. We just know that the Arbiters are worse elsewhere. That's... Not any better. Well, at the very least, without my mother there, and without me there, there's no one to oversee things like... oversee things like punishing members of your group that you're running with. There's no one there to... to head things. And so the Arbiter side is... At least within Moore's Rest, it is less structured. But whereas that's gotta be worse, Silas. We don't know that. Silas, I was... You were on the bureaucratic side of the Arbiters. I was in it. The less structure they have, the more that they feel that they can get away with. It's worse. I know it is. But the people may be more inclined to fight back if there's no one to enforce things. I know it's not ideal, but when one side lose, loses rules, both sides lose rules. At the very least, they have a fighting chance. And the people that I worked with the people that I actually respected and trusted, they're going to try to continue to do what I was doing. And they know to release the people from your group if they're ever captured. At least there's that. I know hoping that it's better, or at least that the people are fighting back is naive, but it's all I've got.
We just, we need to fix it. I know. We How's have it? a million things to fix. I know we do. I, everyone keeps telling me to relax and I can't because it's all there on my little itinerary list and I can't organize any of it to see what I need to do first and where I need to go. I... I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to deal with the dragons first, as we promised, or at least help get them away. Then we're going to turn toward my mother. And then, once that's taken care of, we can choose one of two paths from there. We can either continue on with the staves along the way, or we can turn toward Alistair. I think Alistair is less of a threat right now while he's figuring out what he's doing. That's the other thing I heard. Uh, what? He's he's in Irakel. What's around, in Irakel for him? I, I don't know. He's around Mount Gear. <clears throat> and Kit thought, did Kit? Did you say that out loud? What? The whole thing about the hearts of Atlaren. Yeah, I did. Everything. Okay, okay. Kit said there might be something to do with the hearts of Atlaren. I have no idea what that is. Oh. Uh, mm. That he might be trying to gather power or something. Then, I don't think a collection of those will do him much good. Because they're so volatile. Unless he has something very specific in mind, which... Knowing what I know of Alistair, I doubt it. No, he's... I think he's hiding. I think, I think so, too waiting until he's <clears throat> as powerful as he can be for the time being and then he'll I don't know I don't know I don't know what he's up to I, I you know what I don't really care I don't know what he'd want to be up to he's clearly afraid of to you and he's going to be even more afraid now if he finds out Sylphie's alive. And if he finds out that we have the staves. But would he be that interested in what we're doing? As far as I know about him, his goal is to live. And picking fights with us is a bad way to do that. I, that's, that's why I think he's hiding, but I don't know if word gets back to him on any of what we're doing, I worry that it might give him ideas. I'll be honest, Mary, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, yeah. because he's a man who makes it his business to know what's going on. And at the very least, he'll want information just to know where you are, so he won't be there. That's the other thing that worried me about him being an Irakel. Is he went through the northern part first, coming from Harris to Irakel, so... You think he may have bothered the Volfira? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would care that much about, about Kit. But if he, he might do something to make a statement, you know. Again, I don't think that's his goal right now. I mean, it's worth checking in on, but. Yeah. I if he's, it. if he's in Irakel, I mean, that means he's headed south. Yeah. There's, other than Garrett Eldathas, there's. I don't know of anything major that would be of use to him 
in the south. <clears throat> I mean, maybe he is headed for Gerard Gerard Eldathas. He could go through Port Saris and land in Constanos and go to the Realm Gate. We don't know, but I he was not a powerful caster until fairly recently. So I don't know how much he knows about the tools that he could use. He needs time to learn first. Yeah. So I think, while I do think it is wise to remove threats before they get too big, I think he's on the back foot still and we can afford to look in other places for now. I can already tell Sylphie, <coughs> bless you. Um, okay. <laughs> bless. Um, bless. Um, I can already tell Sylphie's going to be chomping at the bit to get to him. I That's all she cares. That's all she cares about. She doesn't care about the dragons or the cult. Well, she hasn't had the experience that we have. I know. I think once she gets to see what we're up to and the reason that we're doing some of these things, she may be a bit more inclined or maybe less. Honestly, it would be safe for her, for her if she was less inclined to join in on all of this. Yeah, I know. So we know what we're doing. Dragons, yeah. mm -hmm. my mother, mm -hmm. staves, Alistair. Yeah, yeah. Put that in a list, and it starts in two days. Nothing else happens till then, well, except this warden nonsense. Yeah, that was the other <coughs> thing. Um, you have to go down there. Uh, uh, no, uh, not not because you're getting arrested. I got us out of that. Don't worry about it. Um, I was going to be arrested? Probably, yeah, I was. Um, we're, we're very wanted, uh, in case you forgot. No, I know. Um, yeah. Uh, there were apparently a couple of murders, and they were looking for someone who could talk to dead people, and I thought you might have that particular talent. Did you volunteer me? Uh, it was either that or they would probably come bang down our door and be like, hey, you're Silas Moore, so fucking get in our jail cell. Mm. So. I suppose ingratiating myself with them would probably be a better idea. Probably. Yeah. Well, at the very least, we can have a good uh, foot to start on. Let's go talk to some dead people, shall we? Okay. I promise one of these days I'm going to stop causing problems for you. Shut up. No. I cause just as many. Just, well, maybe not just as many, but definitely serious ones. Yeah. I'll give you that. What did you Quality over quantity. Yeah. What did you tell Sylphie, by the way, about the whole dull fair thing? I... Not everything, but... I told her that he had been my patron. And... Was no longer. And... I don't foresee working with him again. That was the gist of it, but okay. she had a lot of questions that I was not ready to answer. Most of them had to do with you. Like what? Hmm? Like what? Like, was my shit going to get her sister killed again? Oh. Uh, was this staff going to be too much for me to handle? Was it going to make me crazy with power? 
so was still was... there going to get mad at you because you had a confrontation with him, so on and so forth. So she was interviewing you, essentially. Yes. Mm -hmm. She was doing what she didn't get to do before I married you. Yeah. <clears throat> and she told me that if any of my nonsense got you hurt, I was next. Yeah, that sounds about right. Mm-hmm. And she said it's not a threat, it's a promise. Mm. Which I believe. Oh, I believe it too. Trust me. Uh, you're not worried about any of that coming back to bite us, are oh, you? Oh, terrified about it. Okay. Good. Good. Just another thing to worry about. Uh, <laughs> I... Not saying it might or will, but I'm worried it could. Yeah. <clears throat> Dulce hasn't said a word. Well, maybe he knows to leave well enough alone. Or maybe he's waiting for an opportunity. That is certainly his style. <laughs> I think you worry plenty enough for both of us. I... <clears throat> I don't want you to think that I'm just sloughing it all off. I'm not. I know. And... I also don't want you to shoulder the worry by yourself. I'm just less inclined to show it. I don't know, I just... Ever since... Ever since the siege, I've just been thinking about Kenna down in the cavern. Locked what? up in that tree, and... She's... She's the quintessential person who... didn't want... to deal with all of the bullshit that was thrown at her. And she did it anyway. And... She ended up locked away fighting Olgar Heidelin for who knows how long. I'm not going to deny any of that. I just... I don't want that to be me. I don't want that to be any of us. What do you think is going to happen? I don't know, Sai, but we keep getting more and more stuff thrown on us. Everything... The little control that I have in my life is because of other people's choices and actions. And I just keep feeling like it's just going to all pile on. And I'm going to keep getting these responsibilities that I don't want. And my entire life is just going to be putting out one not to, no pun intended, but putting out one fire after another. It's a good pun. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. Then say no. No. There you go. That, that's not what I meant. I meant... I know. You, you are incredibly like Kenna in some respects. You were dealt a hand that you never imagined or asked for. And you keep being held, dealt more cards that you never wanted. There is a point where you can fold and walk away. We know we can hand off these staves. If we need to, we will. Because 
there is something dangerous in doing too much or doing this for so long that it's it's not something you want to do and that's where problems start I don't want you to do these things if you're not ready to do them this isn't our fight it never has been we're we're trying to help out other people but We've already done more than almost anyone else. If you're done, you can say so. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I Let me ask you something. If tomorrow the whole list was gone, if the Highland Cult wasn't a thing anymore, if your mother was dead, if Alistair was dead, all of it went away. Olgar Highland wasn't a thing anymore. What would you even do? Well, if the Arbiter problem was solved as well, I... I think I would want to just travel and be with myself for a while and you and just <laughs> meet myself I guess yeah I I don't even know what I would want I I'm such a person who just lives for tomorrow and not 10 years from now you don't have to know. You can still live for each day, but each day doesn't have to be a fight. I mean, I don't want to be insensitive or anything, but that's easy for... No, I'm not going to say that. That's no, terrible. say it. It's easy for you to say. You grew up in a mansion. And I grew up on the street. So. We grew up with very different fights. I know. And mine does not compare to yours, or vice versa. I know. I... I don't know what... The reason I don't say no, Silas, is because... I don't know what else my life is going to look like if if I just drop everything, if I just hand flame art off to some asshole and you know, what what am I gonna do? Go travel with the caravan? Like what That sounds nice. Uh for like two days and then I'm gonna be bored. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be bored. So then Join them in what they do. You're a fantastic musician. You can be a performer. You could join in whatever the weird things Quinn does. <laughs> you could learn sword dancing like some of their people. You could do... You wouldn't even have to be a part of the circus. You could be a mercenary if you wanted and just take simple jobs. You could do anything I'm not trying to persuade you into anything but I I want you to see that there's a lot more than these overarching worldwide problems you don't have to be the one who solves them there are other players in this literally who <laughs> can, will, and maybe even want to take up that mantle. The Guild of the Gate is among them. And there are people like D and people like... People like Haley Molinark and so on that happily take on these responsibilities because it's what fulfills them. 
if this doesn't fulfill you, then you shouldn't be doing it. I don't know what fulfills me. Well, then we should go find it. You'll never know until you go and look. Well, maybe in between all of my mounting piles of bullshit, Marin. we can Let's go Does- talk- does any of this do anything for you? Does helping these people who who they need help but not necessarily our help does helping out with this make you feel any better? Does any of these victories each time we take a staff away, each time we find somebody willing to help us as well, each time we solve a problem that's been plaguing these people for years. Does any of it do anything for you personally, other than lift guilt that you don't need to be hanging on to? I mean, yeah, I, I want to help people. I, okay. I mean, that's why I join the freedom fighters and Mars rest in the first place. I want change. But I want it on my terms. Then why aren't we just doing that? Because it's not that simple. But it could be. Because I... I know that I want to help too. But some of this is just, some of these odds are just impossible. And we're doing more than, you know, 10 generations of people do in the span of a week. And it's hard. But big changes like we're doing, they don't affect individuals they they change overarching long-term things they don't help villages they don't help little people sure we can go and help Konstanos but that's that's different from the other things we've been doing taking away a staff doesn't affect a little villager somewhere but it also doesn't help the things we care about either. But so if we want to help Moore's rest, we can and see change where it matters to us. I know there are bigger things on the table here, but sometimes bigger things are just not our issue. Well, then I just feel negligent. Why? Because if I have the ability to change something, I should do it. If I have that in my power, I would be an asshole to not change it. Hmm. There's a lot of things that I do that I have had to compartmentalize and everything in order to live with myself. And that's not one of them. I was given Flameheart. I was given that responsibility. I have the ability to do something good with him. So I'm going to. That was an accident. It was an accident, but... Who do you owe this to? I'll get back to you on that. I will follow you wherever you go. 
So if you decide that this is what, not what you need to do, but what you want to do, I will follow you. Okay. But I want you to think about it. I'll think about it, yeah. Um, let's go talk to dead people. All right. And he stands up, takes a moment to stop you and hug you, kisses your forehead and walks out. Uh-oh. And uh, as you get back to the rest, um, Sylphie has... Uh, taken a couple bruises nothing crazy minor stuff uh but uh bull has actually been teaching her how to wield the war hammer properly she's got a good sense of how it works but she had to sort of adjust to the weight and like the reach and uh as you as you arrive at the edge of not the actual like pit but a different training area off to the side you see justine has uh, a shield on each arm and is let, letting like Sylphie take um, some swings and you see uh, Sylphie just haul off and just smash the rim off of one of these uh, shields. It was already pretty beaten up so it was only a matter of time and Justine has to like pull it away so not to get trapped and all and you hear Sylphie be like, yes! And you hear Justin go, fuck yes! And they're just, like, pumped. And Bull's off to the side, like, yeah. I'll tell her that. <laughs> I call in, like, be careful! No! Ugh. Smash! No, oh, boy. Are you, is Kit there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Uh, I actually wanted to have a quick conversation with Irina. Okay, yeah, she's watching all of this happen, occasionally calling out corrections, which Mm -hmm. Bull puts into place. I'm going to walk over to her and be like, Irina, so I have Mm -hmm. a couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, First, have you thought about the regenerate? I have. Um, And she turns toward you with her arms sort of loosely crossed and says, I... I spent a long time learning to live this way and not only live this way, but excel Mm -hmm. this way. And I always thought that this happened for a reason. And I believe I found that reason uh, a few years ago when I taught other people missing arms and legs to fight better than everybody that still had everything attached and I still do that to this day so I keep it as a mark of pride Okay. and the fact that the bastard who did it is very dead hmm. so I will politely decline that's, that's perfectly fine um, <clears throat> I had a second question for you mm-hmm. uh, do you just humor me. Um, do you know anybody who has a really bad problem with the humans in town who is also magical? I could think of a couple. Um, I mean, obviously, there's the Lord of Calamai Hall. He he practically earned his position because he hates humans. Uh, Does he have any very devout followers? He has a few. Okay. Um, honestly, most people look the other way because most people believe the humans brought it on themselves because not too long ago, this was reversed. Uh, and is Irina human? She is. Okay, okay. Um, you do notice that people don't treat her with disdain, but that's likely because she's earned her place. Yeah. Um, she says, I know it was mentioned before, but 25 years ago, before the whole civil war, essentially, 
and the attacks from the outside and so on and so forth, humans were taking over this city and they were... They couldn't legally do anything too awful to the non-humans, but any loophole they could find, any freedom that they could use to go against somebody else, they used it. Mm -hmm. And then after all of the fighting and the eventual loss of the former Lord of Kalamai Hall, this place became a little more democratic where instead of a line of nobles or a council of nobles who run the city, it is the guilds who send forward representatives and the Lord of Kalamai Hall is not necessarily, he is a noble, this particular one, but he is elected. He's a governor, not a king. Or anything like that. And since then, things have gotten a lot better for non-humans. But there has always been a... There's always been this festering resentment. And the humans who remain have not made it any better. Mm -hmm. They're entitled. And over time... They kept making things worse by refusing non-human customers in their own shops, and eventually they went out of business. But those humans who caused all the problems left and never had to deal with the consequences. So now the humans who are here have to deal with being looked at like monsters. Gotcha. So it's all just flipped on its head. But neither side is innocent but we do know who started it which was a combination of the previous rulers and their council and the wardens gotcha. because the wardens are still here they keep poking at that issue and because the old guard force was never disbanded and is primarily human basically all authority figures our problem and the reason Laura Bain is here right now is that she's looking into petitions from uh, the local people and from the Lord of Calamai Hall to actually disband the warden presence here in Calicar Harbor because Calicar does uh, Geralt Shell does not have its own warden's guild we take wardens from Irakel and Harris, but Irakel and Harris are about 50% human. So both of them mostly only send humans. Mm -hmm. And so she was basically given an ultimatum, either get rid of the wardens altogether or do not send humans here. She can't do that because it's against part of her guild's tenets. She can't discriminate against who she gives opportunities where. So that's a problem. Gotcha. And then the current guard force is made up of mostly humans because all of the local non-human guards didn't want to be with them, didn't want to support them. So it ended up just making the problem worse by them all quitting. So... A lot needs to be changed, and it's not happening fast enough. Gotcha. And it's causing more tension, and the people are starting to say that we don't need guards, we don't need wardens, we just need the Tala and the Urakalo, which we're willing to help with, but we're not law enforcement. Yeah. It's difficult. And what with other city-states being threats, like Com uh, like uh, Kamate and things from the jungle, we can't afford to lose a formal protective force. So That makes sense. Politics and all that. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good to know. At least maybe help us out a little bit. Mm. Um, okay. 
Yeah, that's all I had to ask. All right. Thank you for your help. Oh, look, Sylvia and Marin are back. I mean, Sylvia, Silas. Si Silas and Marin. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of S names. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of you guys who all um, wander off together. There's two. There's a lot of veneers over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh Sylphie and them all finish up and Sylphie like holsters her hammer and like puts her shield on her back and uh just comes striding over. It says Okay, so uh, what are we doing? We're gonna let's go yeah. talk to some dead people. Talk to dead people, yeah, right. or Silas is. Uh, can we also make sure that Silas is um, disguised? Please use Silas the hat. Pops the hat on, and he becomes an orc. Perfect. Nobody will ever Silas suspect. Silas, but orc, basically. Yeah, uh, and muscly. Silas Mork. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I'm just joking. Oh, mm -hmm. All right. Let's, I clarified uh, that down at the guild too, so don't worry about that. Are you all ready? Okay, we're walking. We're walking. We're moving. Okay, you guys, head back to Kalmai Hall and make your way inwards, where you see uh, Truman is standing outside of the uh, the door within the long hall, but the door to the prison, and he spots you guys as you step in sort of pushing past a crowd of uh people in there who look a little miffed um but uh heading through uh he stands up from his leaning post against the door uh against the door frame rather and says i assume this is our uh yeah our contact yes and he's uh, our cleric and Truman reaches out, shakes Silas's hand, and uh, he takes a key, opens up the door to the prison, swings it open, this is big, heavy, wooden, and metal barred door, and as soon as he, like, opens it up, you guys walk through and he closes it, it is weirdly quiet in here. Creepy. Like, there's nobody in the cells? No, there's people here. Um, so the first area that you're in is an office, not not a warden's office, but like a prison warden's office. And you see uh, a uh, you see a, a human sitting at the desk, just looking over a ledger, flipping through, marking things. Um, and you see another human, both of them dressed in uh, like the local uh, blue and uh, white of. Calicar Harbor. And uh, the one, uh, the second one leaning in a corner just sort of appears to be on a break. He almost looks like he's falling asleep standing up. Um, he sort of perks up as you guys step in. And Truman just gives the warden a nod and the guard steps through, opens a second door and you step through. And it is still deadly quiet, but you are looking down the length of a cell block. Um, the stone wall, there are stone walls in between each cell, um, that don't allow for like any cross chat really between the bars, unless they like try to peer around the corners. Um, each one is held, uh, is blocked in with just a lattice of steel, um, and with a, a pretty hefty metal door, not like a barred door, but an actual like sheet of metal with a like a window popped out of it. Um, and uh, inside each of these uh, cells, you can see there appear to be two per cell, uh, per cell, and most of them are just sort of sitting quietly. Some of them have books. Some of them have like. A piece of charcoal and like a piece of paper and they're doing something some of them have like a little toy that they've made themselves but they're all quiet i lean forward to truman is this normal this is very normal why that's how it is and he points uh, to one he points to a human in one of the cells and you actually see they have a collar around their neck yep. that appears to be made of leather that's what I thought 
That's humane. It is rather essential, actually. There are a number of people in here who can use magic. And the less they can speak, the better. Just keep walking. And uh, he leads you down the way. Um, And you see some people don't have collars, uh, but they don't really look like magic users. Um, At least they seem like beefy and don't look like they care much for magic, uh, but they're not making any noise either. Uh, they don't want to draw attention to themselves. Yeah. Um, but you see wardens and guards through this area, just sort of patrolling or standing guard. Uh, Truman takes you up two levels. Um, and as you get to the third level, this one has a hallway that is all stone with metal doors that just basically you can't see into any of them without opening a, door, uh, a little God bless you, doors. child. Thank you. <laughs> um, and he he takes you through, and it is also very silent in here. Um, so quiet, in fact, that you just the sound of someone coughing behind these doors is like, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's that quiet. Um, but he quiet. takes he takes you down to the end where. Uh, one of the doors is uh, one of the doors uh, in front of it. A human warden is standing, like in the way of the door, and they nod to Truman, who unlocks the door and opens it. Um, and inside, uh, you see—I can't remember what you wanted to talk to the dead people for. Uh, uh, dead bodies for the explosion. Or yeah, people, yeah, yeah, people yeah, who yeah. were murdered by this person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, nobody yeah. died in the explosion. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I, my mind blanked for some reason. Um, inside, you see two different bodies uh, leaned up against either corner. Um, they're wrapped up um, so that you can't see, like, what was done to them, like, below the neck. Uh, one of them is a human girl who looks like she's maybe 15 um long dark hair that has like dried blood going through it but her face is relatively fine um the other one uh is not fine uh in fact you can see some limbs might be might be missing even under the cover is a fully grown maybe like middle-aged orc man um, who looks like somebody just smashed the side of his face in until he lost all his teeth and like his cheekbone is collapsed. So, um, so an orc and a human. An orc and a human, yes. Okay. So, uh, that makes no sense. Question. Um, makes perfect sense. Does, does the girl look like, because she's less bloodied, does she look like she was struck from behind? Um, or if you, from the front. Go ahead and if you guys want to inspect the bodies, go ahead and make an investigation yeah. or medicine check. I'll do investigation. Yeah. Or was... either, I guess. Uh, oh, that's not good. Oh, I'm actually going to do medicine because my mm-hmm. medicine is a little bit better. Yeah, I'll do medicine. <laughs> Five. <laughs> uh, nine on medicine for me. Okay. There are some things that are pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. Um, the first is that the orc man, yes, he's missing uh, opposite limbs. He's missing his right arm, left leg. Um, the They both appear to have been, like, hacked off by multiple blows. Okay. Um, and you do see some wounds around the base of the other limbs. It looks like somebody was literally trying to, like, take him apart. Um, and there is one at his neck, but only one actual hit. Um <clears throat> but he you can assume the blows to the face killed him and they were trying to like drag his pieces away gotcha. or make him unrecognizable um, the girl however uh, you find that uh, she has only one major wound she has like some scratches here and there Um, But the reason her hair is bloody is because as you pull down the sheet, there is a pretty sizable, like, 
indent in her chest and it looks like a spike was in the middle of something blunt and just punched through her sternum and then the blood must have like oozed out and gotten into her hair um but other than that you don't see much else okay Uh, i'm thinking talking to the girl might be easier because her jaw is intact yeah it might be hard to understand the other guy I, Although he yeah. might know more about who attacked him. We could do it twice. Uh, okay. Like, if Sai has enough spell slots. That's true. Do. Okay, so. Speak with Uh-oh. dead. Yeah. Yeah. Have okay. Third level next. Go for it. Hmm? Go for saying? it, Silas. Have at it. Okay. Or yeah. Martin, uh, or whatever your name is. What? Whatever we've chosen to name him. Just, we'll just say Sai. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, Sai. Yes. Um, he There's kneels... more than one Silas in the world. I, yeah. that's fine. I don't he know. He kneels <laughs> uh, down next to the girl and uh, he takes out some uh, incense that he sets alight and he sets it down in front of her as it is the component of the spell. <laughs> and uh, as the smoke <laughs> drifts up, he actually like, he almost like cuts through it with his hand, drawing the runes. Um... And as he finishes and uh, sort of pushes these smoky runes forward, um, you see the wound on her chest like kind of pop, pop and crack as her lungs fill with air. And her head sort of lolls forward and then lifts up a little bit. And you see these not completely like red but definitely bloodshot um slightly filmed over eyes open up um and the mouths just sort of hang open and silas looks up at you guys um and says do, 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 you have five questions okay who killed you seems like a good place to start that seems rather vague. She could just say, yeah. I don't know. I mean... Do you know... Okay, I'll lean in and say... Did you see the person who killed you? And uh, being that Silas is casting the spell, he repeats what you say. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you, you can't ask the course, but he can. Well. Um, and uh, you hear this sort of wispy, like clearly lungs not in the best shape uh, voice uh, just quietly say I saw him what did he look like or what did they look like I'm assuming it's a man (laughs) she said him oh she did okay yeah Um, Uh, yeah. and uh, the answer uh, she answers back says he was human Long dark hair. And dark uh, eyes. Okay. Truman is here, right? Yep. Okay, Truman, you better he's, be writing this down. Yes, he's taking notes. Okay. Um uh He looked old sick. Okay. Um Do you know his name? And Silas or just like mm, Yeah, that's sure. that's gonna be mm. I mean it's a And he he asks, he said, do you know his name? And she just slowly shakes her head okay. and says, I've never seen him before. How did he kill you? And Silas just motions to her chest. Well, I mean, it's fairly obvious. Okay, fine. Um, Did he have any distinguishing marks? Yeah. There we go. Um, Yeah, Silas asks that, and she says... He had a longer beard, and he was muscular and tall. He had, he had green markings on his face. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, one more. One more. We got one more. Mm -hmm. Um. Did he say anything to you before you died? Um. Make persuasion check just for me because I want to see how open she is with it. Okay. Even though it's technically Silas asking, I'm still going to make you do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 23. Okay. Damn. Um, he said, sorry, but you know too much. She and her entire form goes slack and her chest just collapses and Silas is like oof and he just covers it up with the sheet and Truman behind you guys says tall muscular green markings on the face dark hair older potentially sick definitely not from here hmm She knew too much. Maybe she saw him do something. Do we know where she lived? Well, worked? actually, I have a good idea of what she saw because she was found not too far from this gentleman. Mm. She may have seen the murder. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She is the uh, eldest, well, was the eldest daughter of uh, one of the bakers in... Uh, Guru district. The same district where the laundry blew up. Okay. Well, let's move on to this guy then, I guess. Mm -hmm. And Silas repeats his smoky incense runes uh, and pushes the runes forward. And in this case, um, this this guy's like torso is still intact so as you hear the breath pull in you see the side of his face like kind of sagging because it just has no structure you hear a crack as the jaw pushes back into place but it's still loose because everything here has been damaged um and so his jaw is just sort of hanging slack almost like he had a bad stroke on one side um and the amber filmed over eyes open up and look at Silas directly. And Marin, you notice this time that as this dead person looks at Silas, he sort of takes a deep breath, but holds their gaze almost out of respect. Mm. Oh. Okay. Five questions. Um... Do you know why this person went after you and killed you? Um, the orc, still holding Silas's gaze, uh, speaks in a distinctly uh, Garrett Eldathas, or not Garrett Eldathas, um, one of the sort of southern-ish uh, Irakel accents and says pretty sure it was because I'm an orc uh, her um kit Did he have any distinguishing marks? I want to make sure it's the same person. Um, and he, the first thing he mentions is uh, he had these green marks on his face. The same person. They weren't there when he came up to me. But as soon as he started, as soon as he started hitting me, they flared up. And I saw these wings. Wings. What? Asmar? Hmm. 
Were they literal wings or were they magical? Are you asking that? Because you might not know the difference. Uh, yeah. What kind of wings were they? How about that? Okay. Um, Silas relays and the orc says they were... They weren't like anything I've ever seen. They were feathered, but they were losing their feathers. They're starting to look skeletal. Mm. Okay. Black feathers. Oh. Had you ever seen this person before? Once. He was talking to wardens years ago. He was real nice back then. Came from the south. Don't know why. Huh. One more. Yeah. I, I want to ask, did you know his name, but I don't know. I mean, do we have any other better questions? I don't have any. I can't think of any either. Oh, um, do you remember what he was speaking to the wardens about back then? Oh, that's a good one. Sure. Um, he says... It was when I was a kid, after the battles, he came to help. He was real nice to everybody, helped rebuild stuff. He was telling some wardens off a bunch of kids. He was trying to help the people. And he, as he's staring at Silas, you see his eyes like flicker over toward you, recognizing that you have been speaking. Um, he says, I think I remember. He had a bunch of rings on the front of his shirt. All linked together. And then he just sort of collapses. Rings linked together. Is that like chain mail? Is that like... Make a history check. Do I get to make one or would I not know? Yeah, yeah, you okay. can both make history checks. Guidance! Unnatural 20. Mm -hmm. Oh my fucking god, that's terrible. History? Mm -hmm. Nine. 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 Um, oh my god. Kit, you're like rings on a shirt. What the fuck? Marin, um, you remember a couple things. One is that nine rings linked in a circle is a symbol of the Guild of the Gate. Mm. And often worn by chasers. Second is that you have seen that person before. Uh, uh, t who? Oh no. Ethane. <gasps> oh fuck. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so much for fucking vacation, right? Yeah! yeah! Fucking hell! I thought this is like a little one off thing, like uh, some random guy. We're all connected oh. to the great circle of life. <clears throat> Y'all said vacation, I gave you <laughs> one day. <clears throat> I kind of straightened myself up. Uh, and I look over at um, Truman and I go, doesn't sound familiar to me. Mm. And uh, make a deception check for him. Can't believe uh, you. What but, are you talking uh, about? They're going to try and like 
take him in or something. Deception. 19. Grace. Um, Deception. I'm trying to keep it together so that mm-hmm. we can deal with him and not have these fuckers. Oh. Um, couldn't tell what number that was. Oh. Uh, Truman, who you see is who has finished like writing out his notes. Um, has actually drawn the the nine rings. He knows the symbol the guy was talking about. Um, and he glances at you as you say that and says, hmm, well, at the very least, we know that it was a chaser. I don't know how many Osmar there are among the chasers, but I do know there are a few in town. I'll see if maybe Laura can give me an idea of who this might be. She's fairly in close with the guild. (laughs) But this was extremely helpful. Glad we could be of service. Yeah. And uh, he closes his notebook, puts it back in his jacket and says, and if you follow me, I'll lead you out. Okay. He turns and walks out. And you guys follow along through the silent ass prison. And he leaves you at the door to the long hall. Um, I want to hang back and just talk, ask him a question real quick. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wait for everybody to walk forward and I'm going to kind of look at him and be like, so, um, Mm -hmm. do you have Vinrith here? Is that a serious question? Actually, yes. A silent prison under your watchful eye. You know exactly where he is. I am not allowed to disclose who we have and where. Insight check. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. No, it's better than I thought it was. Whew. Uh, insight, insight, insight. 27. Oh, shit. I thought I rolled an 8, but I actually rolled a 16. Hmm. <laughs> It is very hard to beat the spy master of the wardens of Nataline, but uh, you done did it. Vinrith is here. <gasps> I knew it. Fucking knew it. I just, I just look at him and I kind of nod, and then I walk away. God, if you tell Sylphie that, that's gonna be thorough. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you guys head on out. Uh, I think we will... Uh, Marin will keep very quiet until we get back to arenas. Okay. I didn't like that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, when we get back there, I'm gonna close the door. Are there blinds? Are there curtains? Yeah, there are curtains. Okay. Draw the curtains! All the curtains. <laughs> okay. So Marin starts drawing all the curtains... As you guys get in there and Silas is watching, like, what are you doing? What is going on? Everyone shut up. <laughs> okay. Okay, once all the curtains are drawn, I turn back around and I'm like, Ethane Molinar killed those two people. I thought that sounded familiar. Yeah. But the what green markings threw me off. Same. I don't know what that's about, um, but an Acemer who, like, and he appears to be human, you know, it, 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 it all fits together, and he was a chaser. What's he doing here? What could be <laughs> so important? I don't know. I... Oh, no. I mean, he could be trying to feel some of those tensions I in Calicar Harbor, right? He could be trying to draw this divide between humans and, and non-humans. Or he's here to collect. Collect what? Um, I asked him a question before we left. I asked Truman a question before we left. Uh... They are holding Venrith Corsair in that prison. Fuck. 
yeah, that, you know what? That makes a lot more sense. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Or they could be trying to get Truman, but I'm pretty sure they're going to try and get Venereth. Venereth would be a much more useful thing, I would think. Uh, so, to, what should we do? <laughs> we, have to, we have to get a hold of him. We have to kill him. Should we tell everybody what's going on? See, all right, here's the thing. I'm afraid that the wardens, if we tell them that they're going to want to stick their nose in it and... And die. Well, die and then also want to, like, want us to bring him in or, like, you know... I'm afraid they're going to want to take over everything. I mean, if we had his body in a tree, we would be out of here before they would even know. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying we could just do it ourselves and not have to involve them. That's true. I mean, but we could get some extra reinforcements mm -hmm. to handle him. Because... Sylvie's not in fighting shape, and yeah. the last time it was the four of us, we got our asses handed to us, so. That's true. Who else with you currently? Is it just the three of you? Uh, I yeah, I would think. Yeah, Justine didn't come with and us. And Bull isn't with us. Bull's not with us. So we do have Bull again, I guess. Okay, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, everyone would have seen you guys come back and gathered up. So yeah. I'm going to assume the whole crew is here plus Irina. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, boy. That's... Irina. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we just break it down for Irina real quick about what's going on so she has a better idea. Yeah, Bull has been catching her up on some of it, what he does know. Um, and as you explain it, she sort of nods slowly and says... Yeah, I think I remember him. I would venture to guess that because of the people he's been hurting, that this has absolutely nothing to do with the tensions here. He is just using it as a distraction well, so that he can break right. into the prison. That's true. He could definitely... Yeah, if all the wardens are more concerned about that, he, they're not as concerned about mm -hmm. what's going on inside. And he's a human. He could walk right in. Yeah. Humanish. Well, he half looks thing. human when he's not yeah. going yeah. crazy. He's a half glass Asimar. Mm. Technically, Asimar is not a race, so. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, yes. yeah. Um, well, well, how are we going to get him? I'm not sure. If he's um, after Vinrith. I can only think of telling Laura what's going on so that we can be there when he comes to get him. Would Laura keep that quiet? I have a feeling Laura would keep it quiet if it meant stopping losing a terrible prisoner like Corsair that they've probably worked very hard to get a hold of. I have a stupider idea. Okay, no, hit me. What if we set it up and make it look like we're going to break in and kill Venrith? That's interesting. I mean, it would draw him out. Yeah. What if we just and gave him Venrith? We can't. Well, I mean, no. we're not gonna. We'll act like we'll give him Venrith. I I nod to Silas. Like he's got the hat. That's live bait. Oh, that's an interesting idea. That is an interesting idea. And I think I'm about his size too. Mm-hmm. I mean, does it have to be? Okay, sure. I mean, anybody Maybe. could put the hat on, but Silas is a good fit. 
I mean, I guess the idea is that we kill him before it gets too out of hand, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't like the idea of Silas because if he does get away somehow, then we've also again given them something that they need. Yeah. So maybe it should be somebody else of no consequence. Oh, that's true. Them. I mean, it could be me. Um, and uh, among the group, uh, Irina says, why not me? And Bull's like, Mom. I She's mean, like, I can play the part. And Ethane hasn't seen her before. That's true. Not if one of us yeah. is missing, if Kit's missing, he's going to think that's suspicious. Yeah, if he's watching us. Yeah. Which, I mean, we didn't announce ourselves quietly, so... And right. Bull is like, well, we're not seriously what, considering this, are we? And don't worry, I can bring her back. No, all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Worst case scenario, <laughs> you guys. Uh, Bull, listen, it's her choice. We're not going to make her do anything. Yeah, I know, but it's... If he... If he actually does, like, get away and take her... Like, best case scenario, they turn her into a walker. Worst case scenario, they just straight up kill her. And we won't know where she is or how to get her back. I mean, that's going to be anybody who we put in that position, isn't it? Yeah, yeah but it's, it's my mum. And Irina reaches over and takes his hand and says, I would rather... I know you don't want to hear this, but I would rather die a help than live helpless. And he, like, dips his head, and you can, you can hear, like, that's a phrase she said before. And he kind of mutters, like, yeah, me too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I like that idea. The idea would be to just wail on him. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he has another one of those uh those things embedded in his skin or something to bring him back. But we just have to keep pushing through. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's gonna... Uh, it took a lot last time. Yeah. I turn and, uh, to Sylphie, and I'm like, you could also be a help. Uh, because... Okay. How do you feel about being a mammoth? <laughs> I like that. That sounds fun. Okay. It is Because that will... That'll fix what you're feeling right now will go away while you're in that form and I can give it to you a few times. I like this. Okay. Just like, you know, if it drops, like, get me out of there. Oh, yeah. Okay. And If it um, drops, I'll just turn you back into a mammoth. Yeah. And uh, Silas says, I also have a backup just in case. Oh my god, I have the greatest idea. What if I wild shape into a giant eagle, and I'm carrying Sylphie around, and then when the battle starts, I drop my form, polymorph her into a mammoth, drop a mammoth, airdrop a mammoth into the middle of the battle, and then we all just go crazy. Yeah! We'll, we'll see how it pops off. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, Silas says... Operation Dumbo Drop. <laughs> Yeah. Silas says, I, uh, I could send him a message saying that we have Vinrith. <gasps> That's a great so idea. So we could set up a meeting with him to make sure he shows up instead of trying to find him. We could arrange a trade. But when are we, when do we want to do this? Do we want to do this right now? Do we want to do this to, Yeah. Roses are red, candles are lit. Do no harm, but take no shit. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, so I mean, we could... I would like to tell him closer to when we are actually going to meet him. Mm -hmm. uh, so that he doesn't try and come find us ahead of time and find out we're lying. Yeah. Um, so, when are we setting this up? I'm good and to go. Sophie speaks up. It's like I am ready to go. I'm ready right now. Right now. Oh god. Anytime. Okay. okay. Um. Why don't we all eat a healthy meal first, and then we can. We'll send our message. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we had a, oh no, I don't have that prepared. Never mind. Ooh. No. What was it? Don't worry Prepared's about it. Feast. Yeah, I don't oh. have it. Oh. Okay. Um. Yeah. And uh, Irina stands up and is like, "Okay," and she heads into the kitchen. Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. We just have to make sure to give her the hat for a while so she can attune. Oh, yeah. And good. Silas just, like, frisbees it, and she takes it and pops it on her head. Perfect. There you go. It looks kind of dumb at the moment. <laughs> it's just like an Indiana Jones hat sitting mm -hmm. on her head. Yeah. Does not suit her outfit at all. I always thought it was more of, like, a Peter Pan hat. That's what I always thought of it, too. Yeah. I thought of it like a Peter Pan kind of hat. I mean, it can be it can be a bicocket. I'm cool with that. Sure. <laughs> bicocket. It's called a bicocket hat, yes. That's great. Wow. Um, Because it has two folds in it and a feather. I look at Sylphie and I'm like, is there anything that, like, Tall Donos can do? I don't know if you can, like, say hey. What is she gonna do? I don't know. You, you talked to her yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. How did that go? Peachy. What'd she say? Not nothing. She doesn't talk. <sighs> what did Maz what say? Did Maz say? <laughs> so through him, she apologized a lot. Which like thanks, but no thanks. And she she said she had some things she wanted to, to do, but she wanted to help us first because of Kit. Mm -hmm. um, and I told her, we'll see. Do you think that's a good idea right now? I think... Wait, sorry, what'd you say? Uh, I <laughs> said, do you think that's a good idea right now, copying an attitude? With uh, the... Yeah, I think God, I've earned good. it. Yes. So she uh I understand that she had like some backup that didn't work, but like mm. I'm just not really into that at the moment. So uh she's going to give me some space and we're going to talk when I don't feel so tired. Okay. I respect that. Anyway, and she sort of changes conversation <laughs> as Bull goes to help Irina. And uh, Silas starts just like writing on a piece of paper in his journal just like trying to figure out what he's gonna say to molly um ethane and uh sort of gauging from each of you what you might want to say and i guess just keep it as simple as possible mm -hmm. well yeah it's 25 words it's gotta be simple yeah we have been with course or meet us at where should we where should we do this Preferably outside I... of... I'm actually thinking maybe near the beach. Okay, do you really want to fight on the beach? Because running in sand sucks. Yeah, but I have Nyx. And Taldanos is right there. Yeah, but... Okay, DM. 
Mm. I don't know if you're going to tell me this or not. Is our speed going to be affected if we're fighting in sand? Sand, unless it's very specific, sand is not considered rough terrain. Okay. Deep snow would be rough terrain. Um, Like desert dunes that are like super, super deep would potentially be rough terrain. But like beach sand, no. Okay. Okay. Actually, Kit, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do it on the beach. <laughs> sounds uh, fun to me. I just didn't... Well, I don't know. Whenever I run on sand or, like, even walk on sand, I feel like... Ugh, ugh. Yeah. So, I was I, like, Yeah, but your back. your characters are fit, so... Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, they're not Some... wrong. I'm... Wow. I'm not in shape. So. I feel the same about beach sand. It fucking yeah. sucks. Yeah. Like, you walk up a small hill in sand and you're fucking dead. I love mm-hmm. beach sand. Mm-hmm. Well, fuck you. So, yeah. Okay. And, um, I guess the part we should figure out is why would we be offering Corsair to him in the first place? Yes, what Ooh. do we want in return? That's a good question. Um, hmm. What do they have right now? The stave. They're not gonna. They're not gonna give us that in exchange for him. That's true, but at least it's a guarantee that he'd show up because they actually have it. But I don't know. Well, Uh I think I don't know. I think we should make it something semi comparable, like Cindy. Eh, Two birds, one stone. Not a bad idea because we know that. Well, we have reason to believe that Cindy is not as important as she Mm -hmm. makes herself out to be. Cindy, dead or alive? Yeah. Preferably dead. Yeah, I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty reasonable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's a. That sounds like a good trade to me. Yeah. What do you what do you think, Sai? Uh, I'm worried that Hmm. Are they going to trade a white cloak for a For a sacrifice? An important yes. sacrifice? A very important sacrifice. I mean there are other courses that they could use. Yeah, but this one is, like, the most powerful werewolf in the world. Or at least the I most well-known. Also, I I kind of say really low, like, when I talked to Dolthair, he said your mother is not in, as important as she purports herself to be. Maybe there's somebody in there who wants her out. We know Kyla wants her out. So, She's competition. And and a Thane's attached to Kyla. Mm-hmm. That might work. How about we ask for Cynthia Moore's head? How about we just ask for Cynthia Moore? I don't well, want us to Because I I overreach. my only concern is is that if they show up with a very alive Cynthia Moore and we start fighting she could join his side. But why would she then? To survive. But she's gonna be pissed. Well, if yeah. she finds out that like she's getting betrayed. That's true. We could use her. That's she may not work with us. She might just attack him and run. She'd probably yeah, just fuck off, which yeah. I'm fine with. We already know she can teleport. Yeah. Um, and I, mean, I can't stop dead. her. So. We can we can say her head if we want to. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get that, but we can say it. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. All right, sure. Let's give it a shot. All right. Silas, you're the final editor on this note, so what do you... Oh, lo and behold. Um... <laughs> uh... Okay, so 
You guys, what do you want to ask for? I'm sorry. Uh, Cynthia Moore's head. Yep. Essentially. Okay. In return for Venerous Corsair. Alive. Alive. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, they can use him dead. It works either way. I mean. Um, sorry, I was working on. Dead or alive, on, your choice. I was working on uh, Nix's next thing. Ah. Um, such a fun one, and I don't think it's accessible by druids. Yay. Um, yeah. Well, you gave me Ray of Frost, and that is definitely not a druid spell. So. Oh yeah, Hellish Rebuke is in a is a warlock spell. So. That's awesome. That's what I use. Um. One and a tiefling feat, I think. Is it? No, it yeah, is. It, it right. belongs. Uh, yeah, yeah, Infernal Legacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, Silas nods and says, okay. Am I messaging him now and giving him a time and place? Uh, we need to make... Well, we should probably give them enough time to actually do this thing. That's true. Yes, but they could get her here in an instant. That's true. They could potentially even trick her into coming here. That's true. It would be easier to trick her here than try to kill her and bring her. Yeah. Maybe so we, we should, should be, be prepared for a living Cynthia more. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I guess we should eat and then go out to the beach. Uh, Each. Let's go get away. Let's <laughs> uh, I look at Silas and I'm like, are you okay with that? Are you comfortable with... I mean... Uh, as comfortable as I'm going to get. We won't do it if you don't want to. It needs to be done. Okay. Send it then. And he nods and quick, quick uh, writes himself out the, the message and sort of condenses it. And uh, you see him draw the runes and read it off. And then I'm not going to try to put it in 25 words right now, but it basically says, we have Corsair. We want Cynthia. Dead or alive. Uh, Bring her. And he like says like a mile north of the break wall on the beach. Mm hmm. And uh, sends it off. And uh, after a moment, um, he sort of almost like uh, goes a little glazed over as he's listening to the response. And uh, you see him kind of shudder just a little bit like, ugh. Um, And once the voice finishes, he says, that was very strange. Uh... I've never had the person I didn't... I've never had a person I didn't message answer my message. Oh, Kyla answered? Yes. Ah. It was like hearing her and Ethane speak at the same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've heard Marin do that once. Alright, we don't have to... I remember. Yep. She... He... They said... Uh, without any hesitation that it was a deal. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> they don't like her in there. And um, she said that as a token of respect to Marin, they would give us the honor of finishing her off ourselves. Oh, Jesus. What have we done? <laughs> uh, okay. So I suppose unless Ethane has her in chains or he's just tricking her there, we should be prepared for quite a fight. So how are we going to handle this? We have to be tactical about this. Mm-hmm. Now, do we... Do we want to fight them both right now or just one? Well, we can't give up Bull's mom. 
No. We we can't. I think we're just going to have to fight and hope for the best, which sounds yes. terrible. Or... What if we give them Venerus? How are we going to get him? We don't even know where he's at. We know he's in that prison. That's going to take us a long time to find. What if I we mean, actually just ask? We could just ask. Truman's not going to do that. Well, we don't know. He seems... He's clearly a spy master. Mm -hmm. He, of all people, would understand the value of... Cynthia Moore. Can and you, having her out can, of the picture. Yeah. Can you <clears throat> spare another message, message spell? Yes, I can. Um, and he quick writes himself out a message and uh, sends to... Do you want him to contact Truman or Laura? Truman. Truman. Okay. Leave Laura sends it. Yeah. Sends it to Truman and basically says, if we had a way to take out an extremely powerful white cloak, but it would cost giving up Venrith, would you be interested? And he doesn't, like, give details beyond that. And as he listens for the answer, he repeats uh, Truman's uh, response. He says, I would like to meet in person in a warded place to discuss this but it is certainly a possibility if it is a white cloak. Okay. Uh, Irina, can you make that mm -hmm. to go, please? We yep, yep. have to have a conversation. All right. Yeah. Uh, to go in Calicar is to wrap it all up in a leaf. Perfect. Sweet. And uh, a lot of bread. Uh, but yeah. Are we just going to head back up to the... Um, and then. Silas says, "I he didn't say it, but, and then he stops as he gets another message. Oh, okay. There we go. And he repeats and says, he'll come to us. He knows a place nearby, but he can't speak it aloud. Mm, okay. Gotcha. And, uh... Silas answers him back, basically says, we'll be in the middle of Urikalo Square. Um... And uh, guys, grab your food and fuck the fuck off. Yep. Off into the square. Good and it place. is only, well, not too long. Um, it takes a while to get from Calamai Hall to uh, the square, but not too long before you see... Uh, mm, Truman. You see someone approaching you who is not Truman. Um, it is a rather tall, rather slim sun elf. Um, male. Uh, in a uh, warden's uniform. Uh, with the, the hat and the whole nine yards. And uh, he walks up to you guys. Gives you a nod. And in Truman's voice says, If you'll follow me. Follow. Okay. He leads you off uh, to the northeast, uh, down an alleyway that is kind of kind of slim to the point where, like, Bull actually can't fit through. And he's just like, "Uh, you catch me up later." Okay. <laughs> and even Justine is like <sighs> trying to get through. She has to turn sideways. Um, but the rest of you manage to make it through. Okay. Because y'all are y'all are thinnies, um, mm -hmm. but uh, he leads you through a little bit of a maze until you get to uh, a door that has uh, that is painted green and has a black circle in the center of it. And he lightly knocks on it before opening up the door and stepping in. And inside, you see a bunch of other drow who are all gathered around just doing their own things. They look like they're not working at the moment, but they all have the full black that, uh, that uh, Truman normally wears. And they all look up, nod at the Sun Elf, knowing who it is. 
um, and Truman takes you to a separate room. Uh, and there is a table, and uh, the other drow bring in a bunch of chairs for you guys and sit you all down. And Truman drops the disguise. We don't have a ton of time. So. I didn't think so. Um, we Who is it? Cynthia Moore. Yep. That is quite an offer. You're telling me. They didn't hesitate. Nope. That doesn't surprise me. So. Vinrith is, um, not only is Vinrith useful, Cynthia Moore, as powerful as she is, much more powerful than Vinrith, she has ideas. <laughs> She's dangerous. We know that all too well, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, deal. Perfect. Uh, Where is he? He's coming. Okay. We're meeting, I figured um, this was going to be good, so I asked him to be transported. Okay. We're meeting them a mile north of the break wall on the okay. beach. Good. Um, and not too long later, you hear the door open again, and you hear a couple voices talk back and forth before the door to your room is opened up. And you see being dragged in, looking like absolute shit, like he has been beaten within an inch of his life several times. Fenris Corsair being escorted by two rather burly uh, wardens, both non-human. Um, and uh, they bring him in and force him down into a chair. And Venrith is just, he's almost like foaming at the mouth. He's so angry. And you can see that he has two sets of shackles on his arms. One actually fit him as he is. And the next is like above them, slightly bigger mm -hmm. to compensate for if he transforms. The other ones will break, but these ones will stay on. Mm -hmm. um, and he's just... His chest is heaving, he's angry, his hair's all messed up and short and short, and his clothes are just a mess, and he is just trying to contain himself looking at all of you. He's like, what? What is happening? Congratulations. You get I to... helped you. <laughs> Hardly. And you get to actually help us this time. So. What are we doing? You get to have a nice new little home in the Highland Cult headquarters. Congratulations. And the breathing picks up and you realize he's starting to hyperventilate. He's like, no, 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 please. No, 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 no. Silas, no. do you have something to calm him down? And Silas reaches over, sort of squeezes his shoulder, and Venrith actually like snaps at him, but that's the instant the spell goes off and Venrith's entire body just goes kind of limp and his expression just goes slack um i how long until we have uh before we're meeting them uh so I, i'm gonna say like an hour shit i will wait then i'm going to cast charm person on him when we get a little closer um sure he doesn't flip out yeah uh calm emotions does like make him calm but it doesn't stop what he's thinking. Yeah. yeah. So now more, uh, more like coherent. Coherently, he says, "Please don't. You don't understand what they're going to do to me." I understand. Please. I don't want this. Neither did any of the people who you hurt for the Arbiters. I'm not an Arbiter. I just needed money. Doesn't matter. And he turns and looks at Truman, who's stand sitting there blank-faced, watching all of this. And you can see Venereth trying to, like, appeal to him. He's like... Don't. I, I kept you fed. I made sure none of us starved. You can't let them do this to me. And 
The Truman nodded, said, and I think I've repaid you tenfold by keeping people from killing you for so long for all you've done. It's time. And Venereth's head just sort of bows. I feel kind of bad. I'm not going to lie. Don't. Oh, I feel kind of. Oh. Truman looks at all of you and says, I, um, I don't want this to happen to my brother, but there are some things you can't forgive. And there are some things that are worth more. And he, looking at Venrith, he says, and I'm afraid you've made yourself worth less than what we need right now. And Venrith just staring down at the table. And uh, about that moment, um, Sylphie, who's been kind of quiet, is like, this is like, this is fucked up. What are you talking about? Like, it's necessary, but like, we all agree that this is really fucked up, right? Sylphie, you remember him from I, when we were kids. I, I know, but he's, she looks at, she looks at Truman. She says, you don't. You don't care? And Truman looks at her, sort of the brows furrow. Not a whole lot of expression out of him, just in general. He says, I care. But there are things I need to care more about. She says, I... I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but... Like, it's your brother. And Truman nods. And after that, Sylphie's just quiet. I walk over to her and lowly say, We... You did worse to our brothers. They weren't our brothers. They were... And... Just because don't, we didn't share blood doesn't mean that we didn't grow up the same way. Raised don't the same think way. that I don't feel awful. I understand what's happening here. I understand it's necessary because we did it too. But just... She looks at Truman and she says, I don't think you feel anything. And Truman just looks at her straight faced says this again I'm not saying we can't do it but I'm just I don't want to be around this guy and she gets up and heads to the other room mm -hmm. I'll go and follow her it's an interesting reaction yeah considering she I was all bloodlust yeah, well, I also would have thought, like, the last time she saw Venrith, he fucking bailed, and so she was fucking pissed off. Don't worry, I have my reasons. I know. I'm, yeah, I'll go after her wherever she runs off to, but. Um, yeah, she doesn't go far, just the next room. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess. But, uh, oh. oh, no, go ahead. I say, I guess I'm just there and being like, all right, well, get everybody packed up because we need to we need to go. Mm hmm And Truman stands up again, forces Venerith to his feet. Silas comes along with you guys, and uh, you bring everybody and head out. Um, Sylphie kind of hangs back from the group as you're going. And Marin, you know her well enough to understand that there's some conflict going on here where... It is very clear that she hates Venrith, yeah. and she agrees with everything that's going on, but Truman is throwing her off. I kind of lean over to her, and I'm like, why, why is this messing with you so bad? He's just some guy. We're never going to see him again. I don't know. It just bothers me. In what way? He doesn't feel anything. 
look at him. And she motions to him, and Truman shows nothing. Can I make an insight check on him? Sure, go ahead. See if there's anything wonky. Oh, no, that was an at one. Seems like a pretty secretive dude. I don't know, Sylphie. He's just... He's... Seems like he's just getting his job done. I know it makes me a hypocrite, but... I'm not saying it makes you a hypocrite. I'm just it saying... It does. That it does. What Vinrith Corsair does with his brother has no bearing on what we are doing right now. I know. Just can't imagine somebody being so unaffected. I don't know. Like it's not it's not like I think there's something wrong. It's just I don't know. No, I don't know tell, how to no. Tell me. I am curious to know. Flynn and Redner, they were awful. Nobody can argue with that. But when I went after them, I knew what needed to be done. And I, I wanted to do it. But I... It sucked the whole time. And it didn't make anything better. Yeah. It didn't make me feel better that they were gone. The only thing anyone got out of the situation was just knowing they were gone and couldn't do anything ever again. But... I still felt something, because... The men I was looking at were not the boys that we knew. I could still remember the boys. And back when we actually cared about each other and looked after each other. And that's what made it hard. But this guy, he just... I mean, you heard Fenrith. They've been through probably a lot of the same stuff we have when we were kids, it sounds like. And this guy just gives him up without a thought. He didn't He didn't wait to say yes. He didn't consider it. He just said, absolutely. He's worth less than what we can get out of this. Like, I understand the logic behind it, but it's just... And I guess it's not even just this situation, it's just disturbing. I don't know why I care so much. I like that you care. I don't. I hate caring this much about something that should be easy. I put my hand on her shoulder, I'm like, no, it makes you better than him. Don't ever think that caring is weakness. That means that the world hasn't broken completely yet. It doesn't really make it any better. It doesn't, but... Just know that I'm glad. We can talk more about this later. I don't want to talk about this. It kind of sucks. Okay, we will. I, I think I'm doing too much of a self insert here. Probably. And I'm just thinking... I'm thinking of what I would react like if somebody told me, if Red, Flynn and Redner were, were alive, how would I act if somebody said I could trade them for something that needed to be done? And I know I'd say yes, like this guy. I just can't imagine 
just being heartless about it all. It's because you're a good person. That's debatable. Can we go? And she just starts walking. I'll walk after her. Okay. You guys continue on. Let's go to the beach. Head to the beach. <laughs> the beach, beach. Yeah. Heavy shit. Let's go to the beach. Uh, yeah, you guys head uh, eastward across town, and it takes you a good 45 minutes to get to the spot uh, agreed upon. Especially with uh, Venerith occasionally needing, like, a calm the fuck down. Um, uh, when we get about, like, 15 minutes away from, like, when we're at rendezvous time, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to cast Charm Person on Venerith. Okay. Do I need to do anything? Uh, yes. Wisdom save. He's bad at that. Heh. <laughs> 13. Nope. Fail. So he's going to be very amicable with all of us. Um, and Ben, on mm-hmm. the way. Oh, God. Uh, you. Nix is crazy again and just mm-hmm. transforming all over the place. Um, and uh, as you guys are like walking and talking amongst yourselves, you hear Nix start to repeat words. And then he starts to figure out the context. And as Silas mentions to you, like, um, he mentions to you, like, some of the things he has prepared for the day, like some of the spells. Mm -hmm. Um, And he mentions offhandedly, um, there, there is a spell that I wish I had now that I used to have. And uh, he describes armor made of ice. <gasps> and as he does that, Nyx is just ah! ice. And you see a little thin layer of ice appear over your chest that is not oh. cold to you. And oh. then it shatters. Oh. And, and Nyx says, ice armor, ice armor. It just like <laughs> screams it. Whoa, you have Nyx. access to another thing. Did you send it to me? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my god. And you still have use of it today. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Nyx is going crazy. Yeah. In your head, you just see him forming like suits of armor out of spiky ice and just going fucking crazy excited. As you get the feeling he knows this, mm-hmm. but he's having to relearn it. And now that he's like rediscovered a piece, he's just fucking going wild. And he starts talking in like full sentences. Oh. Using only words you guys have said. Oh. Okay. Like, with perfect context. So he knows what he's saying. Um, and if he's missing a word, he just skips it. Um <laughs> And so at a million miles an hour, just a little bit faster than you can keep up with everything he's saying, he just starts fucking describing to you, like, I can, I can armor, I can armor ice everywhere, just spiky armor, ice, okay. and just repeats himself over right. and over and shows you in your head. And no one else sees this, but you see like a little like flicker occasionally in front of your face mm-hmm. as something is trying to manifest, but it, it never oh comes f- comes to. Huh. All right, Nix. It's okay. Don't yeah, worry. He, we'll use he, it soon. He just <laughs> and eventually he sort of starts to slow down. He he. You hear him almost like panting, like <sighs> ice armor. <laughs> God. <laughs> so and he excited. He starts giggling. It's like listening to a toddler just go off about his favorite thing. Oh boy. Do you ever have a dream that you want? Yeah. You could, you could did you fit? ever uh, think that you would, uh, could? Yeah. Did you ever want to do? Yeah. <laughs> My God. <laughs> it's about what it sounds like. So I have a question. So I'm I'm reading the spell, but when I watch Critical Role, doesn't Travis do one that's fifty cold damage, or is it only twenty five? When he does uh, that fifth level, because at fifth level it would be twenty five, showing this. But I thought he did one with fifty, but I could be wrong. Uh, 
I don't see any other way to increase it besides taking it like to ninth level or something. He does, um, I think that was a different spell. Okay. He might have also cast it twice. So that's also possible. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's just me, but okay. It's good to know. All right. Uh, hold on. I could be, cause I'm like, I'm checking the one that's straight out of the book. So I, he must've yeah. done something else. Um, so there's a couple, there's a couple of these, there's armor of Agathis and there, I believe there is, uh, ice armor or frost armor. Oh, okay. Um, pretty soon I'm close to the touch does not harm the wearer, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Now, I believe it was Armor of Agathus, and I believe he did cast it twice because he okay. got uh, 50 damage out of it. So that meant he cast it twice at fifth yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah, because he's a warlock, so that he makes casts sense. everything at fifth level. Okay. I just wanted to double check. Yeah. You have Armor of Agathus. Eee. Okay. Uh, while we are walking, too, I will just, like, mentally check in with Flameheart and be like, be prepared, bud. Be God. prepared. Uh, what's the... What one do you... What's the highest one you have currently, Ash? Oh, uh, Thor. I fear... No, no wait. Know thy enemy? Yes. Okay, just checking. Yep. Yep. Mm. All right. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me ask you: Do you want to fight Cynthia today or next week? Today. today. Going long? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we should probably take a break, though. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we should. Yeah. I was, that's okay. why I asked. I was like, okay. if we're gonna keep going, we gotta take a break. Uh, so, welcome to another mega stream. <laughs> Yay! Uh, we have hung, done nothing but hung out today. Um, That's true. Yeah. That is absolutely <laughs> like true. All day. <laughs> all I've had day. two um, hours to myself today. <laughs> yeah, there were a good two hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I slept. I took a bath. It was a good two yeah. hours. Um, so yeah, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Uh, just turned 943. So let's say 954. Okay. See you guys in a few minutes. Bye.